There? Come on. You are live. Live. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? Are we monitoring somewhere? See if everyone can hear me. Uh, Steven. I should probably open up my own live and look at the chat. <laughs> okay, let's go to my channel. Live right now. Business coach. Oh, there it is. Are there people in here? Anyone in here? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Hello. I see five people watching now. Okay. It's growing. It's growing. Now live. Now live. I saw the notification on the email. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Trying to delete Instagram stories. There we go. Epic. What's up? What's up? Okay. I see the chat rolling now. I see the chat rolling now. What's up? How we doing? How we doing? Oh, Ivan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So this live stream is titled business coaching. And that's because I want to answer a bunch of questions from y'all. I want to help you out wherever you're at right now. I was just on Instagram live. I wanted to jump over to the YouTube squad fam. Uh, could I, Steven, could you like do a little click on an aperture? Just get a little darker. I think Absolutely. we're like, a little hot on the highlights, you know, got to protect these highlights right here. Ooh, ooh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Okay, everyone can still hear me. Awesome. Smooth and buttery voice right here. All right. If you all could do me a favor, if you're already in here, could you give the video a like, a thumbs up? So, because that just pushes it to more people who are subbed and we could get a party going in here. Pour yourself a drink, hang out. Uh, we're going to do full-blown Q&A and chat a whole lot right now. So, okay, Kevin's already rolling it up. Uh, started, what, what am I trying to say? Uh, top tips for homepage and landing page for customer conversion. So when it, comes to, when it comes to wedding photography and wedding filmmaking, my landing page specifically has – portfolio images strewn across right away. So I want them to see the value of the work that I produce between creative portraits and really meaningful photojournalistic portraits. So if you if you go to my website, you can see five images scrolling through immediately and it's constantly going like that. Um, so then I want to make sure that I'm also, I also have a page that's telling who I am and giving my personality um, and really showing them like who I am and what I'm about. So those two things I think in combination are really impactful um, and having very a very clear contact form that, that gives detailed information about them so that when you follow back up with them, you can, you can relate to them about things that they love and all that good stuff. So um, I think really having portfolio image ready to go, maybe if you scroll down, you have some reviews, you have some places where you have been, um, where you have been featured, stuff like that. Wait, I think my kid's school is calling me right now. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know. It just it just says my hometown. <laughs> Hello, this is Eric. Oh. It's a school district. Um I don't know if this is urgent or not. <laughs> just to remember. Just a reminder that school is in session tomorrow. We do, I don't know why I'm getting this phone. Okay, thank you, my son's school. Okay. Like the, classroom is in the classroom is in session tomorrow. <laughs> That's obviously another reason why we're doing this live stream tonight because this is the last night to enroll in the classroom. The link is down in the description if you've been on the fence over this past week during launch. We want to make sure that you all know that tonight is the last night that it's available. Um, but ultimately, I want this i want this live to be really helpful, and I want it to be a place where we I can coach you through different things that you might be going through with your business. So please, please, please light up the chat, like the video to help out to push this to more people. I want to hear more of those uh, questions roll in right now. And... If you don't ask any, I'm just going to start talking about gear because I know everybody loves gear. So uh, I'll wait till more questions come in. But please, please, please. Um, Steven, could you maybe – here, no, I'll write it right now. I want to say ask all your 
Oh, geez. Business questions. I need a new laptop. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All the keys are stuck. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Everybody in this room and everybody on, on the course and making this thing has been begging me to get a new laptop. Okay, great. I'm so excited to get the new MacBook Pro. Okay. Yeah, talk about that. Um, yeah, so we went to the Apple store two days ago, three days ago. And I, tr I tested out the, I just like was tinkering around with the 14 inch new M1 and it, I thought it was going to be perfect for me. And it just felt too small. It felt so much smaller than this, which is a four, 15 inch. And I was like, I think I need to do 16 and I'm probably gonna do four terabytes of internal space and just bite the bullet and pay for something really expensive. But honestly, like that machine will be the place where I can do work from virtually anywhere um, and house a bunch of stuff internally and not have to rely so much on hard drives on the go, like when I'm out and shooting weddings and places and all that good stuff. Okay. All right. Lots of questions rolling in. All right. Is the course only on weddings? Yes. It is exclusively wedding photography and wedding filmmaking, two different courses that could be bought separately or bundled together. And I have to be clear that if you purchase it, we are raffling one mod, one bundle of both of them for free. So even if you choose just one photo or just the filmmaking course, um, you will be entered into the raffle. Everybody who's purchased by the end of tonight will be entered in the raffle and one person will win it for free. But that doesn't mean that you can't get a lot out of it if you are a portrait photographer, if you are a commercial filmmaker, any of that stuff. Um, so you can go to the site, it's linked down below and you can look at all the modules and everything that's in there. Um, all of that is really clear in on the website. So go check it out. Um, All Star Trio says, what is a great way to start making money with photography? A great way to start is go simple. Like start with photographing families. That's a really good way to start filling a portfolio. And you could take portraits of uh, the couple. Like if it's a couple with kids, you could take photos of the couple and just turn it into a portrait session. We're like, oh, wow, now you have a couple shoot in your portfolio. And if that's, you know, if that's what you want to start gearing towards, or you just start photographing a bunch of families and getting those sessions rolling in and use that cash. The, what, you know, you could charge like $50, $100 to start. Just ask some family friends and, and get that pool going. Like all the people in your circle start talking to all of them and start booking family sessions and then see how that ball rolls. You can start filling your, your um, portfolio with those portraits of the couples and then start booking engagement sessions. Engagement sessions could lead to weddings, all that good stuff. So get the ball rolling with, with, with doing stuff for free or super cheap um, and get that portfolio going so that you could start. A lot of people are like, okay, how do I start charging right away? It's really hard to start charging if you don't have any proof of concept. If you don't have anything that proves that you're worth what you want to charge. Uh, okay. So, Ooh, okay. Austin Pace says, Hey Eric, super, super fan of the work. Thanks Austin. Um, thank you. What advice do I have on marketing after relocating, trying to rebuild? Okay. Biggest piece of advice for relocating. If you go to another city, graft yourself in to a community of people, start reaching out to everybody that is in your market, whether they're photographers or filmmakers, creatives, planners, florists, anybody that you want to rub shoulders with in the industry, go talk to them and start building relationships with them because those are the people that are going to start referring you work, going to give you all that stuff that's going to potentially lead to what will be an established career for you. So yeah, I can't stress that enough. Um, start getting to know people. Um, maybe, maybe you run Facebook ads. Maybe you start running that stuff if you have content already from where you used to live. Um, and you start wanting to just getting your feet wet on trying to book stuff, that's totally good um, as well. But relationships, in my opinion, are what's going to really get the ball rolling and get you much more work. Okay, Zach Elkins, which Zach, shout out. He's in the classroom. What's up? You film weddings now, but also do other films for a business. Would I recommend focusing on one thing for my business? Uh, if it's too overwhelming to do both, then I would recommend focusing on one. But if it's not, which is, um, I mean, like if you're a go-getter and a hustler, I think it's it's more than possible to do both. I do recommend diversifying those two things because when it comes to wintertime and weddings slow down, it's great to have the ability to do commercial work. Like right now, 
I'm talking to a longstanding commercial client about doing a big project for him, an off season um, in, in November this month and into December. And he wants to start doing his own, um, his own educational stuff like me. And so we have experience doing the course. Now we'll be able to start integrating some of all the things we learned at the classroom into his educational stuff. And it's, it gives us something to do in the off season. Once our wedding backlog is all done. Um, now I have a bunch of stuff going on. Like I could go to YouTube, I can make more Patreon content. I can rebuild for more courses that I want to do in the future. Um, but that diversification is going to be really helpful to give you options when you feel like you're in an off season. Thanks for asking that question, Zach. Shout out to the classroom. Um, what questions do I ask a client when they want to quote before you know the whole scope of the project? Uh, so in my inquiry form, I have a place where it says, um, what's your budget for this? What's your budget for the wedding? What's your budget for the shoot? And I always want to get my finger on the pulse of like, where are we at? What are you willing to spend? So I can at least have an idea of, okay, is this reasonable for my price range and what I'm charging? Um, and if it is, I want to entertain that, or I can give them other options right away. And I know how to respond to that. So if it's, it's in a budget that's close to what my services are, I might respond much more warm and personal. And, um, if it's, if it's just like way, way, way below, um, I might respond more with like, Hey, just want to, I want to show you my pricing here. I want to let you know my services do start at this price point. I do have other options. I have associates. Um, just let me know where you're at. And if you need any referrals, I can, um, you know, cause at this point for me, I'm only trying to book a dozen weddings a year. So a lot of times right away, those, those inquiries, I'm, I'm already kind of being like, Hey, price point starts here. Um, you know, my price point is in the 6,000, the start is at about $6,000 now. So if I can inquiry for $2,000, that's usually not even a warm lead. Um, and so a lot of times I'll just say like, Hey, here are my prices. Um, I do start at $6,000. Um, let, just let me know your thoughts. Uh, but yeah, you, you just want to get into that conversation quickly so that you're not having a full blown meeting. And then all of a sudden you're dropping your pricing on them and they're like, uh, awkwardly, like, uh, we can't afford that. Can you give us a discount? And you're like, uh, no, I can't give you a discount as my prices were set. Um, so yeah. All right. Cheyenne at said, I want to jump in on the classroom, but I feel like I have invested in other educational courses that just haven't served me. I just don't know which way to move. Wow. That, yeah. Um, that it's hard when you're selling something like this. Cause you're like, all right, trust me, trust me with your hard earned money. Um, trust me that this is going to be beneficial for you. What I would recommend if you, you know, you have, you know, for about four more hours to make that decision, um, scour through the website, uh, look at the reviews that are already there from people who have already purchased from earlier this week and what they're saying about it. Um, there's a handful of people that are already saying like, they're so happy with this investment already. What I can tell you is that if you are a fan of my work or like some of the things that I do, what I can guarantee you is that I poured my heart and soul into making this and I tried to leave nothing out of it. Um, and even, even with that, we have vowed to listen to all the students. And if we, if they feel like something is missing or they want something to be added, we're going to be doing our best to add stuff to the classroom. Um, so someone, someone asked earlier in this live, I can't remember if it was this one or the Instagram live I did earlier. They were like, do you have contract templates? And I was like, well, I go through line by line on each of my contracts in module seven of the classroom. So you have that information. But I'm like, that's great insight. We could easily draft up a contract template and drop that in as a PDF. So you could, you guys can fill out what you want to, and it could be that much easier for you. I've always, I've also under promised and over delivered on this by there's other PDFs that are already available in there, like a pricing PDF of how to price yourself and how to raise prices over time. And then my full breakdown of the client experience, but on paper with six steps. So it's much more tangible steps, uh, step by step of the process of how I onboard a client, how I, how I book them, how I get their um, retainer, how I get their final payment, all that stuff. Um, so just know that that's our heart behind all of this, um, that we put everything we could into this. Um, and it's really hard to, it's really hard to quantify what the heart part of it is like the actual philosophy and purpose piece is that's what was so impactful for me and what made my business sustainable for myself. 
And that happened when I went to workshop in Brooklyn in 2016 through 2018. And I heard from some of the legends of the industry that I looked up to. And that heart that I learned from them transformed the way I do business and transformed how I could start booking work uh, more regularly with the people that connected with what I cared about. And so that's ultimately what you're going to find outside of all of the technical stuff as well. Um, there's six months of interest-free financing at the same prices if you pay in full. So that's an option for you. And if you're struggling with getting one or getting the bundle, you are more than welcome to purchase one before the end of tonight. And you could upgrade to the bundle at any time if you enroll uh, by the end of tonight and get in in time. Um, so we want to offer that to anybody who does a solo purchase. You can bundle anytime later. Um, but we will not offer that to the public after this week. So I hope that helps you feel um, better about that decision. Um, if you don't make that decision right now, that's totally fine. I know people are at all sorts of different places financially. Um, my YouTube is still here. My Patreon is here. I want there to be options for everybody. Um, the classroom is the place where it's like, if you want to know everything I do when it comes to weddings, um, when it comes to wedding photo, wedding filmmaking, this is it. Um, and then, you know, there's bits and pieces on the YouTube side. There's bits and pieces on the Patreon side. Um, so it's just based on what your your personal status is right now and how comfortable you feel with that. And I can guarantee that I I put all of I, of what I could into this. Um, and we're just super proud of of the outcome. So Michael, Michael says, I don't know if I've ever asked you about business before, <laughs> but if you're just starting out, should you immediately apply for a business license? Or should you make a certain amount of money first? Great question. I cover this in module six in the classroom uh, when I sit down with my CPA, my, my accountant, and we talk about when is a good time to do all this. A lot of people starting out just do it as a hobby and get taxed as such. And then some people switch to a DBA doing business as it's also called a sole proprietorship. And that makes sense for a certain amount of time with a certain scope of income. After that point, you have to reckon with, are you going to become an LLC and incorporate, or are you going to become an S corp? Or are you going to be an S corp functioning as an LLC? We talk about all that stuff in module six. Hunter is, a, is obviously a professional in the field. So I can't speak exactly to your personal situation. And the truth is you just need to consult with a CPA, with someone who knows what they're talking about so that you make the right decision for incorporating. A lot of people incorporate to protect their assets because it separates your business entity from your personal life. So if you got sued, they could only go after your business, not after your personal assets and your personal life. But with that and incorporating, after a certain amount of money, you get benefits in, in tax write-offs and you get benefits in how um, you're taxed less with the self-employment tax. Um, and I, like I said, I don't have the time to delve into that or the knowledge, but Hunter does that in module six um, in, in the classroom. Um, but ultimately if you don't know what to do, you should consult professionals and that would be a CPA, um, get a referral from a friend, another creative, talk to people in your family who know CPAs, like get with the right people to make sure that your business is taken care of. If you guys just jumped in, I know more people are in here now. If you could like this live stream that pushes it out to more of my subscribers, more people interested in business coaching on the photo and video side, photo video world, you like this little R5 sitting here is my new toy my new uh the new thing i'm not really into gear but i'm really really digging this thing just so everyone knows okay sorry that wasn't a flex i'm so sorry okay um let's see would i consider kevin says would i consider getting the new dji ronin 4d for a wedding video or just the sony ace a1 a7s3 or a7 4 <laughs> i haven't looked into the 4d as much steven come in here i want to get your perspective on this um you gonna you want <laughs> you want to sit on my lap <laughs> no <laughs> thanks dad <laughs> uh you looked at it a lot more the it's like the four axis mm -hmm. gimbal this is funny this is this is rally caps on eric's channel <laughs> uh i did i watched a uh, moments video yeah. about the 4d uh it looks very cool. The stabilization looks insane. Yeah, it's it's unlike any cinema camera that's ever been created or has yeah. ever existed. Four axes of stabilization. Yeah, it Is has like a it has like a giraffe neck. Kind it does of like thing. that. You know, like those videos where like they're holding the bird and the yeah. bird's head like stays in the same place. It, it looks exactly it's like, like that. the same thing. It's yeah. it's pretty crazy. I I think based off of the question, uh, I think comparing it to like some Sony mirrorless Kevin cameras. Said, yeah. Um, I it, it looks 
phenomenal. I don't think you'd be disappointed with it. I think your money might go further if you were to get one of the Sony's or a, a similar mirrorless camera within that price range, uh, even just for the ability to shoot photo and video. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you necessarily need all of that stabilization for wedding films. Right. I think that camera is especially geared towards action and sports and things that require a lot of stabilization. Um, you could use it at a wedding, but I just, I think your money might go a little further, Agreed. you know, buying multiple bodies, smaller cameras, yep. less fatigue, and less extra gear. The, that, the, so. the type of filmmaking that I like is that handheld documentary style mm -hmm. and that is seems to be kind of impossible with with the 4D. Uh, yep. And honestly, I look at the 4D. I'm like, wow, that is an innovation of design. That is incredible, um, an incredible step in the filmmaking world. Mm -hmm. But to me, it looks like something that isn't de quite developed to the place I want it to be yet. Totally. And a lot of that had to do with like depth of field mm -hmm. and just not having that extra oomph that I like, that cinematic oomph that I like. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's found in a cinema camera. Mm -hmm. Plus, I just really like the natural movement in filmmaking. Um, so I don't want my stuff to look crazy smooth and flawless. Totally. Yeah. Plus, the IBIS in those cameras are already phenomenal and everything right. that you would need. So. Right. Like, IBIS in this has been yeah, nuts so incredible. far. You maybe get wobbles on the corners if you're wide. Yeah. But if you really wanted to do this with IBIS and like a Ronin S, anything like this, and even Sony, it's going to be very smooth yep. and you do have the versatility to then diversify your business. If it's photo then, mm -hmm. um, and get super low light and interchangeable lenses and all that stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Go mirrorless. Thank you, Steven. Nice. Yes. <laughs> He's going to jump in every once in a while. If I have a question that he knows more about than I do when it comes to gear. Okay. Austin also says, how do I vet couples during consultations? If they aren't a good fit, how do I tell them in a nice way to keep looking? Great question. Um, I've never told anybody, I don't think face to face, like to their face, like, I don't know if we're a good fit. Um, cause that's super awkward, but I have had to say it, um, on email and that's okay. If you feel like <laughs> insert like Twitter, red flag emojis. Um, if you see those red flags, it's totally okay to kindly tell them like, Hey, I think you'd be better served by someone with this style really when it comes down to me feeling like I don't have somebody that's a good fit, it's when people don't line up with my philosophy. If I share my heart and spill my guts about like how much I care about photography and what that means long-term for my clients and the legacy of their families and all these like heartfelt stories in that meeting and their response is like, Oh yeah, that's, that's cool. Awesome. Um, so your editing style, like, is there any way you can maybe make that a little bit more light and airy if, you know, cause I know you're, you have some like dark and moody and like creative portraits, but I like it a little bit more light and airy. If someone says that to me immediately after I just dumped my heart and was like, do you connect with that? Does that resonate with you? Does that philosophy resonate with you? That's an immediate red flag for me. Um, if, if they don't come off of that conversation, mean like, that's exactly what we want, then I personally don't feel like it's a good fit. Now, the beautiful thing is whenever I meet with anybody face-to-face -face or FaceTime or anything like that, it's usually apparent at that point when, when they're that invested in looking through my portfolio and hearing from me on email that they're already resonating with those things because they see that in my work. They, they read that in my bio. They, it's, it's, I wear it on my sleeve. So almost every time when I'm in that face-to-face -face meeting, they're like, yep, yep, exactly what we want. That's totally what we want. And so if there's ever a disconnect on that, then I'm probably going to be sending that email being like, Hey, for the reasons why, like we didn't really, you know, meet eye to eye on that philosophy. And it's, it just sounds like you want a different editing style than me. I think you'd be better served by a photographer that might have fine art or um, film emulation or something like that. And kind and nice. The hard thing there is like you, if you see red flags, I'd be like, hey, I'm going to get you a bunch of referrals. <laughs> you don't want to like friends if you feel like they might be a nightmare client. And so that might be the awkward time when you're like, I think you might just find someone better. Like, I don't know if you're talking to anybody else, um, that kind of stuff. So um, also let me know, like I'm looking back at this and it's looking kind of pixelated. And I don't know if the quality is like, does it look good? I don't know if it says it's okay, cool. Just let me know. Let me know in the chat. Also, if you just started watching, please give the live stream a thumbs up to send it out to more people. That'd be super helpful. Thank you. 
and ask your questions in the chat. Wedding film question. Gino says, do you or would you recommend outsourcing on editing a wedding film? I think that's a great model for a lot of people, honestly. Like if you find an editor, if you find a place that's going to take care of your wedding edit, great. For me personally, it's always been so difficult for me to outsource a wedding film edit to anyone because at this point, I feel like my creative voice is so distinct on what I want personally, creatively, storytelling wise. Um, so since that's the case, it's really hard for anyone to just like lay the framework of what I want the story and structure of a story to be. So for me, it doesn't make sense, but I'm trying to limit the amount I shoot per year so I can make it sustainable for myself where I'm only, you know, shooting five or six wedding films a year. So I have the creative energy to muster that up and to make that film without feeling really overwhelmed, you know, with 20 to do. But if you're doing, if your business model shows it, you know, if your business model is 20, 30 wedding films a year, I would highly recommend finding a place to outsource that can that can really do a good job and make a creative edit that is within your style. Um, but with that, you're going to sacrifice some of the really unique creative things that you would normally do. Um, it's just totally dependent on what you want for your business um, and what you want to communicate. Uh, Trung says, hi, Eric. I have one stop wedding business currently. Um, wedding dress, photo, video, makeup, decorations, thinking, op thinking of opening up a shop. Should we stay at our place and use the rent um, to promote business? Oh man. Um, wow. So photo, video, wedding dress, running it. I don't know if you're running it out of your place or if you're asking, I think you're asking, yeah, opening up like a, a commercial space to do that. Yeah. I mean, wedding dress alongside the coverage of shooting well i think a physical space would make a lot of sense to house inventory um to do consultations uh with with brides that want to fit um do wedding dress fittings and decorations for receptions i feel like it would be really hard to just do that solely virtually um because the beautiful thing about uh, brick and mortar versus virtual sales online is that you can have a brick and mortar and also do virtual sales online. So it's great to have both if you can. It's just a matter of can you handle that overhead expense by having a shop, by having that brick and mortar place. But I can tell you having a brick and mortar place, like having a studio like this has done wonders for my business for finding new people in the in the creative scene in Chicago, being able to shoot in here, make YouTube content, have client meetings, like all that stuff to me is invaluable at that point. And I found a way to do it by connecting with other people to make that happen. So maybe your shop could be in combination with somebody else. It could be a collective or something like that. Hope that helped. All right. Sony's will be far more versatile than the 4D. Yeah. But yeah. Agreed. Um, definitely. Um, Zach said he's purchased other film and photo education programs as well. I definitely say this one is well worth it. Oh man, thank you so much. More personal and intentional here uh, to make you better, not focused on the profit. I so appreciate that, Zach. Thank you so much for saying that. It's crazy encouraging to hear students say that about the classroom so far. And I know a lot of you have only been in like through modules one through four. And uh, part of me is like, oh man, maybe I should have put all the heartfelt stuff at the beginning because I feel like that's where it's going to make honestly the biggest impact. So I'm really excited to see all of the classroom students get to that spot and finally hit all those modules um, and, and really feel the heart behind everything. But thank you so much for saying that, Zach. Just a reminder that the classroom is only available through the end of tonight. That's why we're doing a live stream. But I also want to be here to help you and answer any questions you have, make this time val valuable in the live stream. Um, the, wedding, the wedding photography side and the wedding filmmaking side are both available for the classroom. And anybody that purchases tonight or anybody that has purchased already will be entered into a raffle to win it for free. So we will be refunding a full bundle to one person um, tomorrow and announcing that and all that stuff within our Facebook group. So awesome. Benjamin, what's up? Uh, I'm at the point where I need to increase my prices. I've shot 17 weddings and have met people to finally have second shooters. Um, how can I convince myself my work is worth what I price it at? So I, I talk about this in depth um, in the classroom. I had this monumental moment with a photographer by the name of Levi Tiarina. 
And Levi, I had a one-on-one -on -one mentor session with him at workshop in 2017. And I was right at the same place you are. I was at like 18, I think I might've been up to maybe 25 weddings at that point. And yeah. it was September and I was deep in the editing cave and like deep in that editing backlog. And man, did I feel it. like I was so burnt out. I was frustrated. I just didn't feel creative. I'm like, man, I, I, there's just too much. There's too much to edit. And he's like, raise your prices. I'm like, okay. But he's like, that's the natural deterrent for you to book less. Like that is going to give you the ability to book less volume and actually make more money. He's like, double your price. I was like, double? It, it blew my mind. I'm like, Again, I can't double it. Like I was charging 3,500 for wedding films. I'm like, you want, you're saying you want me to charge $7,000 for a wedding film? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, no one will, no one will buy that. And he's like, okay, well, you have to, you have to charge more because if someone's willing to pay that money, you can make twice as much for shooting one wedding versus two. And it, I know it's such a simple concept but he was so right. It was the natural deterrent. And the one thing that really like embedded in me, like, oh, I, I can be worth that because the demand is so high. The demand is so high. And you're at that place, like shooting 17, you're right on that cusp. Now you're like ready to go. Um, and you start getting more and more inquiries and more and more people and like, yeah, book. Yep. Yeah, book. If your success rate on inquiries is just like 99, 95% of the time, that's another indicator. Like, yep. Should raise that up. Like, really a true conversion rate at this point for me, you know, I'm only booking a dozen weddings a year, but my conversion rate is maybe 10% now, five to 10%. So you really have to start understanding you don't have to book 90% of the inquiries that come through your, your inbox because it will start feeling really overwhelming to take all of those and charge at that level. That next step. Now I didn't, I didn't do what he said. I did not double my prices, but I did 150% increase. So I went from 3,500, um, I might've been charging 4,000 for a wedding film. Then I, I bumped it up to 6,000. And the first inquiry when I got back from that trip booked me at the new $6,000 price. And it blew my mind. It absolutely blew my mind. The fact that I had uh, that Yosemite film and something that I felt so proud of and a portfolio piece where people could go, hey, that's worth that. And the combination of me feeling confident enough to raise the prices to that point because the influx of inquiries were coming in, the, the demand was so high and the turnover rate was so so great. That gave me the confidence to do it. And I did it and I never looked back. And I started charging that and people started accepting that as my value. So every year you have to understand, like, I still struggle with this. I still raise my prices every year. Now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, I'm in five figure range. I'm charging over $10,000 to shoot weddings sometimes. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm worth that. And the clientele will dictate if you're worth that or not. That's just the truth. If they're willing to pay that price. You're worth that. Okay. So if you keep getting denied at that price, maybe that's a point where you realize, okay, I need to bring it back down. I need to get some increase. I need to get some stuff booked. But most of the time raising that price, you're always shocked by seeing, oh, wow. Yep. They booked. And for me, it's been 500 to $750 increments every year, just slowly ratcheting it up. Okay. Hope that was helpful. Um, let's see. Parker. What's up, Parker? Uh, Parker asks, am I planning on switching the C200 to a different camera? And if so, why? Very interested in changing to something else, potentially. I'm very interested in trying out the R5 and maybe rigging this out to feel more like a cinema rig for next year um, and just shooting the 4K all eye on this, not shooting the raw because I'd be worried about overheating. But I might be interested in doing some sort of combination of throwing a ninja on this thing and going straight to ProRes. Um, that's what Steven does with his R6. That's what Gene here does with his R6. I'd be very interested. I might even want to go with uh, the 7. What's the name of that one, the ninja? The Shogun, the Shogun 7. Um, it's because I don't really like the 5-inch screen. I like the 7-inch screen. I have a 7-inch screen on the C200 right now. But I wouldn't mind having a much smaller body to work with. Um, the C200 is just like three times and three times, three times the size and weight. Um, yeah, so this is definitely an option. I don't think the C70 is for me, but I don't know. Maybe it would be if I got my hands on it and tried it out. I do love C-Log too. Um, 
This only has C log three and C log one, I believe, right? Yeah. But C log two is on the raw on the C200 and woo, woo, the dynamic range on that, wonderful. And I've heard that on the C70, it's about just as robust on the, the log two as raw on the C200. So yeah, it might be something, I, but I've also heard that the body is really plasticky. So I'm like, meh. We'll see. Maybe I'll wait for the next cinema camera with RF mount. Or I'll just get a red Komodo. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, if I, the, the biggest thing on that, though, is I want a smaller camera body, honestly. Like the FX series, me interested in that. I want something with good autofocus, too. All right. Ooh. Oh, new sale for the classroom. Justin Jew, what's up? I don't know, Justin, if you're in here, but... If we get a new sale in the classroom, uh, Steven's going to run over with a post-it note and we're going to celebrate. Thank you, Justin. I just had an Instagram video chat with Justin and we chatted about what that investment looks like. Um, after we're done with this live stream tonight, you can DM me on Instagram and I will gladly uh, video chat you. I don't know if I have any. Oh, I do have DMs right now. Okay. I will, I will get on it as soon as we're done here. But yeah. Um, cool. Let's keep going with questions. What do we have here? Okay. If I want to do both family shoots and weddings and couples, should I create two separate price guides for family shoots and weddings and couples? 100% yes. Two separate, what I would recommend, two separate PDF files. Or if you want to keep that completely virtual online with like an extension of your website or something like that, Definitely separate those two between families and weddings. It might be family pricing PDF, engagement session PDF, wedding PDF. That's probably what I'd recommend. Or you can call, you could put the engagement session stuff on that wedding PDF. If it's something like you, if you bundle your engagement sessions with wedding coverage or you include it as an a la carte option to weddings, um, that's totally, but definitely separate family from weddings because Families don't want to see like you charging, you know, three thousand dollars to shoot a wedding. That's not applicable to what a family session usually costs. It's usually in like the five hundred dollar range, somewhere in there, you know, three hundred to eight hundred, something like that. Um, so definitely don't want to overwhelm them with with that. So yeah. Uh, Ni Win asked, "I have a course. Yes, I do, and it's only available through the end of tonight. It's been launched all week. We've been talking about it like crazy." Um, but it, it's closing. Enrollment is closing tonight at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time, okay? So if you're on West Coast, that's not midnight. That is 8.59 p.m. Pacific time, 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. If you guys are really enjoying this conversation and chilling, I hope you poured yourself a drink and you're chilling. If you could give it a like, it's just pushing it out to more people. I love seeing more people jump in here. This is super fun. I love doing live streams. We need to do more of them in the future. Uh, but yeah, I want to help you guys. I want to help you with questions that you have and give my honest opinion on all this stuff. Okay. So filmmaking, I don't know. It says DNA. Is the filmmaking course appropriate for someone who hasn't shot a wedding yet and would like to start getting clients? Or is it more for people already in the business? It is geared to more people that are uh, more towards people who are already in the business for sure. But that doesn't mean you can't get something out of it if you're doing something that's correlated to filmmaking or correlated to photography, whether that's portrait photography, commercial photography, commercial filmmaking, or narrative filmmaking, YouTube, all of that is applicable because the majority of the course is it's technical skill in the beginning part, it's business in the middle, and it's heart and philosophy and marketing towards the end. Um, and, and all of that is applicable to, um, to weddings and uh, other creative pursuits as well. So it's your, it's your call, and I would read all of the modules on the website. It's linked down below in the description. Um, but yeah, it's your call. Go check that out and see what the reviews are. Um, yeah. Austin, what is up, Austin? I love how, much, how many questions you're asking. Um, is YouTube helpful in growing your business? 100%. 100%. 100%. Can I connect you to new clients? Yep. Or is it, is it oversaturated or too late to start now? You know, it's the question is, all, like, that's the same thing with investing. People are like, is it too late to get in on Bitcoin? Is it too late to get in on Shiba Inu? <laughs> is it too late to get in on the Doge? You'll, you'll never know if it's too late or not if you don't try. That's my answer. Um, honestly, a great place to consider right now, to be honest, is TikTok. Like, it's still exploding as a platform. Even Instagram Reels. 
and then get on Meta, in the Metaverse. This is Facebook's new name, Hard Pass. Hard Pass. <laughs> um, yeah, it it is never too late. It's never too late to jump in on YouTube. I've seen creator after creator start year after year and find success. The biggest thing is my tagline on YouTube. You you have to find a creative channel. A, cre a channel is not a good word <laughs> in this in this space. You have to find a creative lane, find a unique voice, find something that differentiates you from everything else in the space and lean into that, leaning into what makes you different to be profound in some sense. So for me on YouTube, it's been giving value. It's doing stuff like this where I want to build community and help people. And yes, I'm selling things, but I'm not forcing anybody to buy any of that stuff. You can come here and consume all the free content you want. And if that's what you get out of it, and that's going to send you on a, a career path that's going to be incredible for you, I'm pumped. That's amazing. If that does that for you, awesome. If you learn better by going to my Patreon and doing that, great. If you learn better by having a full-on course and want to invest in yourself that way with the classroom, great. But when I'm coming to YouTube, I'm offering value first. I'm offering value and I'm offering entertainment. Those are like the, the core foundational pieces of my channel. I want to give back and help people and want to see them be successful in their business and I want to entertain people and make them laugh and feel good about the stuff that that we're doing and just like have a moment to just like sigh have a breath what am I trying to say Steven have have a have a breath of fresh air for a second in a world that is just so frustrating sometimes you know like a meme video that's a minute long might just make you die laughing and it's just fun like I just like that stuff it makes it brightens my day and if I can help and entertain in both of those ways, I feel like that. And I hope that if you're watching now or you're subbed to my channel, that you feel those things as well. And that, um, yeah, it feels that way that the channel gives value in that way. But yeah, I mean, when it comes to YouTube and wedding films, I have absolutely gotten inquiries and bookings from people who have, I actually just shot a wedding of a longtime subscriber of my channel. And I just think it's really cool. He's just a hobbyist filmmaker, but he wanted to hire me for his wedding. And it was epic. And I've gotten plenty of inquiries from Montana to Yosemite because I keyworded those things in the title. And if it's a really good film, that thing can blow up with the algorithm. So you just never know. Andy, I've purchased, I've purchased past education and just never do it. I'd hate for that to happen again. Any inspirational advice on how to stay productive with completing the program should I purchase it? Again, if, if, if that's a medium that doesn't help you, I'm not going to fool anybody in saying you need to purchase the classroom. I've been having video chats with people on Instagram and my opening thing is I'm going to evaluate where you are with your business and I'm going to tell you what I think might be beneficial to you in the classroom, but I'm not going to joke you and, and, and try to just get a sale um, by if I don't think you need this. So I would challenge you to, in the next few hours, dig through the website and look at all the modules, look at all the reviews and see, and if you've been following me for a while and know my heart behind what I make and the quality of stuff that I make, as well as what I, the heart and philosophy I have to make a sustainable business and, and to, um, to take care of my clients, all those things are what you're going to find within the classroom. And um, open communication will be available to you if you have any questions or needs, if you do purchase it in our Facebook group or on DMs on Instagram and all that good stuff. Um, yeah. So, and just a reminder, if you're listening, the classroom enrollment is only available through the end of tonight, 1159 Eastern time. I'm sorry if you're watching this whole live stream, I've said it four times already. Just got to make sure that everybody hears that. Um, so if you've been on the fence, tonight is the last night to make it happen. Trung says, hi, Eric, do I teach posing? Uh, yes. I have YouTube videos that talk about posing with the unscripted app. If you go, if you type in my name, Eric Floberg, and how to photograph an engagement session, I have it there. Um, but something we haven't promised on our website for the classroom is we are uploading very soon a, a full BTS of a, a styled wedding shoot with Stephen and his wife, Laura. We went from uh, getting ready all the way through first look in portraits and you get to see how I pose. And a lot of it is, I should, I should name another module called posing without posing because I have one called marketing without marketing. And I don't give a ton of poses. I just like to foster an environment that makes people feel comfortable. And a lot of times that's like 
just doing things that are fun and exciting for that couple and playing music and just trying to get them to relax. And I've found that when I do that and I, I make that experience fun and exciting and welcoming and calming for them, that I rarely have to pose them. They fall into something and I might tweak something here and there, but I'm really just trying to engage with them in a way of letting them engage with themselves. So it might be like, hey, you guys just have a moment. Let me play some music. Just chill. Hey, let's do a little bit of dancing. Like do a little first dance. Um, and then they do that and they're just into it because they love each other. Um, so yeah, thanks for the insights. Thank you for watching, David. Appreciate that. Thanks for the encouragement. Hyping me up over here. <laughs> Michael, knowing what I know, what would I have done differently in my business to lessen the stress? I would have, this is not just a pitch for my course. I would have learned technical things sooner. I went five or six years on filmmaking where I was shooting 30 frames per second. And I didn't know that 24 was probably the recommended frame rate. Legitimately. I didn't know what peaking audio was. I didn't know what dynamic range was. I didn't know any of the technical things. The only thing I cared about was developing a story that would try to make someone cry. Now, the beautiful thing about that is that it, it, I was successful in that. I made people cry. People still booked me. But my stuff technically, visually, and auditorily, is that a word? Auditorily? I always say it that way. Visually? Audibly. Dang it, yeah. Visually and audibly um, engaging and professional. And so when I mixed my skill of storytelling and getting to the heart of a story with technical production that was good and quality and, and met those two, it became magic. And so I just regret not knowing a lot of those technical things sooner, but I'm so happy that I know them now because I feel like I can tackle anything. And I feel like I can tackle any project and be prepared for, because it, at this point, I know it so well that it feels like another language to me. So if I'm put in any setting, I know what to do with my camera and the settings that I need to have for success in making that film look cinematic and be visually appealing. And the same goes for photo as well. Um, shooting JPEG versus raw. What's up? You have something? Oh, Steven's yeah. going to add something. I just, I just thought about something for uh, for Andy because he was talking about uh, online education and uh, not not feeling like motivated to actually get through all of it. And uh, I, I realized that I've done a similar thing before. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I've done similar things in the past with like the uh, with like Masterclass, which is that brand mm. that does a lot of online courses mm. and stuff. And I've signed up for it and I've never really gotten through it myself. Uh, so it sounds like we're very similar in that regard. So. Personally, I would recommend if or when you decide to buy the classroom, uh, I literally in like kind of keeping with the language that we use for this very school based, uh, make a curriculum for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, there's 12 modules in each of the courses. So if you want to split it up and take your time, which I would recommend doing, just to make sure that you actually get the most out of each module. Mm -hmm. Do like three times a week, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm going to go through modules one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. Split it up, take notes as you go, and then do that the next week four, five, and six, and then seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Don't You've let got, it be overwhelming. Don't let it be overwhelming. Just do it over the course of a month. Prescribe like a curriculum for yourself. Uh, that way you can actually get through everything at a good pace. Uh, you're learning everything that you need to learn through each of those modules, and uh, you're actually getting through it at the end of all of it. So yeah, Excellent. just wanted to say that. Thank you, Stephen. Um, and shout out the class available till the end of tonight. Uh, it's linked down below if you want to skim through the website, check it out. There is a free module in there. Module seven is entirely free and it's two hours long. Um, so all you have to do is just make a login. You can watch all that for free. Okay. Um, hi, Eric. I've been shooting a couple of Vietnamese weddings here, but I want to switch to American weddings, but I don't know how. Also been a second shooter um, for the last couple months. So I'm assuming you're based in Vietnam. If you're shooting... I don't know. You might be shooting Vietnamese weddings in the States. So I'll give an answer to both. Um, shooting internationally is not easy. It's not easy on a technical level. Um, you, you basically, the, the way I see it is you need to have an in somehow with relationships or shooting something for very cheap or for free to get something in your portfolio. That's American. Um, if you're from another country and the same goes for Americans wanting to shoot uh, in other countries, but then you have to reckon with the idea of, is it legal to do that and getting a work visa and all that stuff, or are you going to fly under the radar and just kind of like play it cool? 
So all of that has to be recognized. Truth is, um, I, from a sustainable standpoint, if, if you aren't single uh, with a lot of available time, that's going to be a really hard business model to follow long term to be traveling to tons of different countries. I'm just going to be real with you. That's the reality of it. And hearing from people like Jonas Peterson, who said he had the most miserable year of his life when he shot over 40 weddings in in like 20 different countries, he said it was just, it was the worst experience he's ever had in, in a calendar year. So hearing that kind of sentiment, I'm like, hmm, for me, what's sustainable is finding what's local around you and what's sustainable for you where you are. Um, so if you are in the States, you're shooting Vietnamese weddings, but you want to transition to more American weddings, you have to you have to be second shooting for people who might be shooting in that kind of space or shooting that style. Anything like that to start filling your portfolio with filling your portfolio with stuff that you want to be shooting if they let you use your second shooting um, for your portfolio or assisting and helping with um, people who book those types of weddings to try to start getting referrals from those people and making connections in that space. So that's the biggest thing for me. And it can get weird with like filling portfolio with people and like, all, you know, like trying to figure out all the variables. Um, ultimately, I want you to try to find a lane that's most sustainable for you. And for me, that's like just meeting people wherever they are, no matter what the circumstances and serving them, whoever they are, um, whatever kind of style it is. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of the heart behind behind my work. I just hear you, I just hear you Sharpie on a on a post-it note. Oh, wait, what? Oh, someone else jumping into the classroom. We have David Loy. David Loy. I don't know if you're watching right now, but that's epic. And if you purchase the classroom live right now, I want to give you a shout out. If you're in here, if you're on the fence and you want that shout out. Um, would love to do that. You could drop your Instagram uh, handle in chat. David Loy, what is up? He is a new student in the classroom on the filmmaking course. Thank you so much for the support, David. I really hope you enjoy the classroom. Um, let's get back to these questions. Let's keep jamming. What are we at? We're at four hours until enrollment closing, right? Wait, no, no, it's 10. No, three hours. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Three more hours. The countdown's on my Instagram story. Uh, it's 11.59 Eastern is when the, the cutoff happens for the classroom. Remember, if you purchase tonight, you will get entered into the giveaway, into getting a full refund of the classroom. Um, so if that convinces you to make the decision tonight, you're going to potentially win that. And yeah, we only have three hours left. So Please ask any questions. If you have any questions about the classroom here, I'd love to get to those and answer those as well. Okay. Alanya says, thank you so much for sharing my knowledge and tips on the live stream. That's absolutely free and accessible. You're welcome. Thank you so much for recognizing that. Um, as much as I'm going to be talking about the classroom and it closing tonight, I want, if you're not ready to make that decision, I want this to be valuable to you as well. Um, you know, with my insight on all these, these topics as well. That's always what I'm going to try to pursue on this platform. Just so you all know that uh, Kevin says, do I shoot hybrid coverage photo and video at the same time? And do I teach that aspect? Okay. So philosophically, I don't, I, I can't reckon with shooting photo and video by myself. So whenever I shoot photo and video, it's with a team. So I talk about that with my associate shooters um, and it is my recommendation that if you are going to do that, it should only be at a small wedding or an elopement because there's only so much you can do with doing the hybrid coverage. If you're doing photo and maybe maybe you're doing photo primarily and you're just doing like a small little video for them, that's that's totally cool as long as expectations are right because you're forced with this this scenario where, okay, first kiss happens. What are you going to do? Are you going to photograph and film that moment? Are you going to have it on a tripod over there that's being unmonitored and you're taking the photographs? Like there's so much room for error when you're doing both that I would recommend that one person, at least one person, um, be on the dedicated photo or filmmaking side. And that's just something I believe in strongly, unless again, you're doing an elopement where there are far less high stakes moments or a small wedding where things are much slower and it's easier to be doing both. Um, 
or you're just doing photography and you're grabbing a couple clips here and there and doing a little side package of like, hey, a little two to three minute montage. I think that's ex extensive as I, I, I like to talk about that subject because there's only, when it comes to filmmaking, when it comes to making a wedding film, you need to be all in if you want to tell a story that's gripping and emotionally gripping. And it can't be something that is give, that is only given 50% of your time. And so I would highly recommend getting yourself behind the camera or hiring an associate or hiring a second shooter or somebody to be that for you. And then you could edit all of that, but they could be dedicated in getting all the technical things right, making sure it's in focus, making sure exposure is good, making sure your audio is clean, because um, that just becomes too overwhelming for one individual person. Hope that helps. Um, whenever I do these live streams, I get like so congested. I'm like, I feel like I'm I'm talking all like high pitched. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I need to keep hydrated. I have a marathon to run in six days. Mm. All right. Benjamin says, if I had to start over, how would I go about getting bookings? I would be much more open to the idea of running Facebook ads, to be honest, to get established. But I would be really excited to get to know more people locally, like where I am and um, building those relationships all over again. I loved that part of building my business, of finding a community in Chicago, finding planners that I really like to work with, all that good stuff. Um, I wouldn't do it differently, honestly, because some of the people that I met in this industry are some of my closest friends now in the early days. So I really have no regrets, honestly. Um, uh, Nettie Rock 2 says, do you think the solo filmmaker will continue to be successful or do I think the combo of photo and video will take over? Oh, I think solo filmmaking is here for the, the long haul. I think, I think there's going to always be a market for that because Video is just becoming more and more desired by clients and becoming more and more accessible in our world of media. So I think there will be more, more for the taking. And while a lot of people might do a business model that has photo and video, you can always niche into a market that's exceptional filmmaking because a lot of times when they're offering both, it's not necessarily a lot of times I'd say majority of the time, it's not anything that is like super profound and industry leading uh, as far as creativity and storytelling goes. So if you niche down in that specific lane of just being a wedding filmmaker, I think the opportunities are so much more endless with creativity and what you can do. So the, I, I don't know. I see industry leaders like that as strictly wedding filmmakers. And I think there will always be a market for that of people wanting to individually book their photographer and individually booking a filmmaker if they see the value in each side. If you have a second and you haven't done so yet, if you could like this live stream, that's really helpful for me with the algorithm and sharing that this live stream is happening and that people can jump in and hang out with us. Um, thank you. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Um, Juan says... Just wanted to say that I was unable to purchase this time around, but I'm already saving for when this course becomes available next. Thank you so much, Juan. Um, and I know this sentiment has been floating around a lot. People have been telling me this. I want to be like super clear with expectations on this too. We have every intention to open up the classroom again in the future. We just at this point can't guarantee when or when that's going to happen. Um, that could be eight months from now. That could be a year from now. That could be a year and a half from now. It's all going to depend on when we're available to do another launch because it's just so much work to gather all of the content and design and relaunching and marketing and all that stuff. It's a huge undertaking. And to be honest, the last three weeks of my life have been some of the most intense I've ever experienced. And so I might need a long time to just chill and recoup with my family and all that good stuff. So I just want that to be abundantly clear with everyone because if we do launch it again, it's probably going to be the same model of launching it for a week for enrollment. And it might be more expensive at that point because we're going to be adding to it over the coming months. So I just want to be very clear with that expectation um, that everybody knows but I love the sentiment. Um, I, I really appreciate that sentiment that you are being smart with your finances, that you're saving and you're being um, conservative with that and not spending on something uh, that is too intense for you right now. Um, but thank you. Thank you, Juan. 
Braxton said, Eric, do I want Chipotle? Did he already order it? Shoot, that was probably a long time ago. Yes, Braxton. Braxton, order me Chipotle, please. I haven't eaten yet. It's 8 o'clock. Oh, my gosh. Surviving on coffee. Braxton, did you hear me? <laughs> please. Um, Sheldon says, what marketing tips would I suggest to someone who books every wedding that inquires but only gets one or two wedding inquiries a year? Absolutely loving pick time and the hold fast money maker. Thanks. Oh, man, that's epic. Okay. Um, so I, your volume isn't there yet. I wouldn't consider raising prices until you feel like you're kind of at that cusp of getting to eight to 10. You're getting an inquiry once every other week. Uh, it needs to be at a more sustainable place where you, that's great that you're booking those one, two that come in a year. But if you want to make it something that's full time, you need to probably be in that like 15 to 30 weddings a year window. And so I would suggest holding back and getting your marketing going with relationships, maybe advertisements, that kind of stuff um, first before you start ratcheting up those prices to get volume in. Are you ordering Chipotle? Yes, I am. Sick. Do you have Do you have my saved order? I think I do. Yes. Carnitas. Yep. Guac. You guys like Chipotle? Carnitas, guac, uh, lettuce. No cheese, Jesus, healthy guac, veggies. veggies. Salsa, chili corn you got it. You got it. Yep. And then, uh, are you ordering chips too? To I will. can you, wait? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't. Yeah, I want to dip the chips in the bowl. Okay. Oh yeah. Just, guac or just, chips? Just, just chips. Just chips. Thank you. Chipotle is life. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Daniel says. Oh shoot! It just jumped down to the bottom. Let me get back. All right. Daniel. McD says, Hey, Eric, love your stuff for ages. Thank you. Starting out as a wedding photographer, do you think an Instagram and website are the two essentials to set up, even with Instagram going away from photo focus? I do. Honestly, I think those are the two things that you really need um, to be in communication with people, with potential clients. I'm, what is going on over there, Stephen? Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Pause on that. Four people enrolled in the classroom. Oh my goodness. Okay. What the heck? All right. Cheyenne Montero on the photo side. Epic. Thank you, Cheyenne. I think you're here. I think I saw your name. So epic. Uh, I hope you enjoy the classroom. Jasmine Custo photo. So epic. Thank you for enrolling, Jasmine. Justin Victorio on the filmmaking side. Justin, welcome to the classroom. Thank you for joining. You guys are blowing my mind right now. Okay, Thomas Woods on the filmmaking side. Thank you so much for joining the classroom. I can't tell you how much this means to me, you guys, that you are trusting me with your hard-earned dollars to invest in yourself and to grow your own business. It's it's freaking blowing my, this whole week has been blowing my mind. And I, it's just a dream for me, you guys, to be able to teach in this capacity and to be able to, Oh, I'm going to get emotional. I was, I studied to be a classroom teacher in college and I taught in a formal education setting for three years. And for this to happen again, where I can be helping people access, like access, like meeting their goals and going after their dreams and building their own business. That's sustainable in the freaking world of creativity. Like we get to be photographers and filmmakers for a living. How mind blowing is that? If you, if I told myself, if I told myself as an 11 year old, you get to point a camera at people and make money doing it. You get to support your family by doing it. Like it's, it's mind blowing that we get to do creative work. It's just so freaking cool. And I love it so much. And I'm so excited for all of you guys who are enrolling. And I just hope you get so much out of it and it sends you into the freaking stratosphere um, for your business. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Back to Daniel's question. Oh man. <laughs> I'm just getting so jacked up. I'm so, it's so cool. Um, Daniel. Okay. Website and Instagram. Instagram honestly just feels like it still feels like the lifeblood of where to share your work. And that might evolve over time. We might get Vero. Is that what it's called? Vero? Yeah. Maybe that starts taking out. I don't know. Um, Flickr, <laughs> um, uh, MySpace. Honestly, Instagram feels like the place to be right now, but I would 
strongly recommend that you learn video, at least for marketing your business. Because like you said, Instagram is moving more towards video. You have TikTok, you have YouTube, you have all these platforms that are now pushing video like crazy. What would it look like if your video looked awesome? What would it look like if the sound on your video sounded awesome and you communicated a clear message that got you more work and got you more clients? That's a huge reason why I wanted to, like I reckoned with doing the classroom as just photography first and just doing a launch for just photography. But I knew that there's such a market for photographers that wanted to know filmmaking. So if you are an established photographer, a move for you could be to purchase um, the filmmaking portion of the classroom to at least have those skills. Maybe you don't want to become a wedding filmmaker, but all the technical things you would learn there between the technical parts of shooting, creative shooting, and marketing your business could be the thing that sends you to be able to do um, Instagram reels and IGTV and a YouTube channel and all that amazing stuff. So like, it, I just can't, I can't stress it enough that you talking to a camera, honestly, our friend Tom Boyd, who, I mean, like go, please. I always freaking forget his Instagram Bonus handle footage. Bonus footage on Instagram. Please go watch his content and tell me, tell me that video content doesn't explode. Jeez, I got to turn on my volume on TikTok because <laughs> that app, man, when you open it, it just. Seeing this right now, but we love you so much. You're the best. <laughs> uh, go follow TikTok, go follow him on Instagram, go listen to his podcast, Creators Our Brand. Bonus footage. Shameless plug. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this. He's know him now before you can't he's see like that. way, way, way beyond that. I'm going to tag him in the comments. Okay. Bonus footage. Like go check that out. And he talks about how creators thrive with doing video content. He has a podcast that's epic where he, he knows so many people. He knows like he, he it's like friends of Scooter Braun who is uh, Justin Bieber's booking agent manager. Okay. <laughs> um, he like, Ghost wrote an album with Asher Roth. With Asher Roth. Yep. <laughs> He's friends with Asher Roth. He's in Asher Roth's music video. He knows that. <laughs> um, anyway, off topic. Video is unbelievably compelling these days for marketing. And the way I teach marketing in the marketing without marketing sexual module 10 of the classroom is like you have to engage viewers and so yeah a photograph might not be able to do that like a standalone photograph might not be able to do that now but what would a slideshow of a bunch do or what would your philosophy and you spilling your heart to the camera or some meme video do the meme video i made earlier this year it's almost at like 2 million views i think it's at 1.8 million views and it has gotten me like 10,000 subscribers on youtube and i just can't i can't stress it enough how much good video can do for your business and marketing it. So anyway, off the soapbox. Epic, epic, epic. Awesome. Jiao says, thank you for the knowledge and experience and sharing cheers from Portugal. Thank you so much. I hope I pronounce your name sort of right. Um, Yao, maybe. Um, epic. Thank you so much for tuning in all the way from Portugal. That's so cool. It always blows my mind that people are watching from around the world. <laughs> the internet is wild. Like we never could do this 10 years ago. It's just, it's insane. It's insane the connections you can make and what what's possible with your business freaking worldwide uh, with the platforms that we have for free. I'm just live streaming all this for free on YouTube. Um, it doesn't cost me anything to live stream like this. It's just awesome. I mean, it's expensive gear, but um, what the heck? Oh, two more people in the classroom. Okay. We have John, uh, Jean Richard Perez or Jan Richard Perez. Uh, thank you. Photo, uh, my, a photo course in the classroom uh, just purchased. And we have Kevin L on the photo side who just purchased the classroom. Thank you so much. It is blowing my mind seeing these come in. You guys are coming down to the wire. I love it. I love people are getting off the fence, making decisions, wanting to invest in themselves. We, we were hoping this would be the case that people would see the value in this after the launch for, for this week and, and making that jump. And it's just, it's insane to see like, 
this is it's wild. There's two more on here too. Since <laughs> since we started the live stream, we've had eight new people enroll in the classroom, which is just so sick. If you want to check it out, it's linked down in the description. You can look through all of the reviews, all of the modules and the breakdown of every single module and what's involved in those. A thing I can't stress enough is that there is a Facebook group that you get to join once you enroll in the classroom. That is going to be the place where it's going to be our home base for asking questions, for building community. I hope that one at some point we all just like decide to go do a meetup somewhere like Teton National Park or something or like Yosemite or somewhere cool. Um, but I want that to be a place where we're all answering each other's questions, that we're helping foster our own businesses and growing them. And honestly, handing each other referrals, like if we're already booked to then go, hey, I'm not available for this date. Who's who's ready, who's willing, who wants to take this job and then helping each other book, helping each other market our own businesses, and just being in on it together. Awesome. Ethan, when shooting with the hold fast money maker, what do you do with the extra gear? Oh, man, I don't know if it's in this room with me right now. I'm going to call Steven back in because he just left. What's cool is I've actually, I've actually the past two weddings used a different double camera harness that I think is in the other room. I'm just going to wait till Steven gets back. So hold tight. Wait, Steven, could you, could you find my, um, could you find my double harness, my clever supply double and then my Ona bag? Yeah. I, I don't know where the Ona bag is right now. I'll find it. Okay. Thank you. So short answer is I wear a double harness. So if it's, if it's the hold fest, um, oh, nice. Braxton's already got it. He's going to be my model right now. How do I look? This is, all right, I don't know if you're in the shot. Am I think you're in the shot. Cut off. <laughs> so, Am I in the shot? Oh, wow. That's so delayed. I know this is, this is the clever supply double harness. That is a prototype right now, but he just launched our friend, uh, Todd from clever supply launched this new product. And this is a prototype, which we already talked to him about. Um, but we had to cable tie it because it was slipping, but he's already um, adjusting that. And I think he's going to flip these so they go down. This thing has peak design integration at the bottom of it, which is insane because all you have to do is do a quick release at the bottom with the peak design clips, and then they lock in and hang. So he has other solo straps that have the peak design integration that are leather. Um, but this thing is light. And if you listen... Let me, do you have a hold fast in here? Okay. No, I'm not harping on hold fast because I've used hold fast for years. This is my hold fast right here. Okay. Hold fast. Clever supply double. Like it's a little thing, but the fact that I'm not jingling around <laughs> um, uh, like during a ceremony is pretty cool. Sometimes this thing like squeaks and stuff when you pull the pins and pull the camera to your face. I can I can already tell you that I've shot two weddings in this thing and it's completely silent. And honestly, it feels like it's half the weight of this. It is it is epic. I just I I didn't know if I was gonna like it because I love the hold fast moneymaker so much. Um but yeah it's I'm so pumped for when he opens this up to the public because it's just going to be legendary. Okay, so that's that. But when I'm wearing a double harness, so let me just model it for you real quick. So if I am doing the hold vest like so. Okay, okay. Um, I have the double right here. This is the other thing. It like, it twists in the back a little. So that's the other thing about Clever is that it has this in the middle so it never twists or anything. But I have this Ona Bowery bag. This isn't mine. I think mine might be at home right now. But this has the ability to hold like three lenses. And if I'm going one camera body, I can put another camera body in here and another lens if I want to. And then it has pockets on the front and the sides. So I could put memory card case. I could put batteries in here. I can all of the Instax. Uh, that I do throughout a wedding day, mm -hmm. I always slip into the back pocket in the back here. And it's just an incredible way to carry extra lenses. Since I shoot double camera all the time, um, it's amazing to be able to uh, hold all my prime lenses. So usually I'll have 25 or 50 on my camera bodies or 35, 85. 
and then I'll rock the other lenses in my bag. So if I have 2450 on my on my harness, I'll have 3585 in the bag and 45 tilt shift. And then I'll swap out 3585 with 2450 um, throughout the day. So I, I have five lenses on me pretty much at all times and two camera bodies, and I can be completely hands-free. The other thing about um, the other thing about the clever supply strap is that he is working on potentially doing a magnet that like sits on your hip so that when you have this thing on, which is going to be crazy and I'm so excited about it. When you have this thing on, it is probably going to, um, where can you see over here? He's going to build something where there's a magnet here that clips to the hip. And then when you clip to those hips, clip to the hip, <laughs> you, <laughs> You can lean forward and then the cameras won't like flop in front of you like so. Cause I can't tell you how many times I've done that with the hold fast where I lean forward and the cameras like bump into each other, which is like gives you heart palpitations and makes you want to vomit. Um, I'm pumped to just have those clips on the side where I can just like, like a full dad, just be like, Clip! and then I can, whenever I bend over, it'll just be right on my hips. So I'm going to keep wearing this because I want to rep Todd's stuff because he's a legend. And if you've seen it on my YouTube channel, we did a commercial with him um, in his garage where he does all of his leather making and all that good stuff. Uh, so go check that out. Okay, hold on. The team is doing a ton of texts for the classroom. Is there anything important? No. Oh, another review. Oh, sick. Kristen said there's another review by Asan. This course covers everything. I mean, everything. Whether you're a beginner learning the basics or a pro trying to get more out of the creativity business, it has it all. I'm not, I'm not new to photography, but I'm new to trying to run a wedding photography business. So this came at the perfect time. I've done a handful of weddings already thinking I know what to expect and what to shoot. This course was a breath of fresh air. Even rewatching certain modules, I was always learning something new. This was the push in education I needed for a very, very long time. And I'm glad to be a part of the classroom. Holy crap. Thank you so much, Asan. That's such a glowing review and such a testament to like if you're already established that it's art it's helping as well so thankful that you wrote that thank you so much um and it sounds like you already got through all the modules which is epic because you did that in a week now what i would challenge you to do if you're watching go back and rewatch and slow down um because it is it is 15 hours of content on each side so uh, I highly recommend taking notes and just like taking it at a pace that's sustainable. Okay, Anna, Anna, got to the part of the course where my son comes in and hangs out for a bit. Yeah, that happens during the gear and not so basics. Uh, that got me thinking, how does one go about finding a good work-life balance? Any tips? Yep, I'm not in a good work-life balance right now, to be honest. I'm being fully transparent. The truth is the expectations were met that we knew this week and especially into this night, it would be insane because this is something I've been working towards for four years now to launch a, a course in a classroom and uh, the classroom like this. Um, so communication was clear and that's ultimately in this conversation when I talk about most work-life balance is all about communication with your spouse, with your kids and making sure your friends know what's going on and that they're challenging you with uh, what is to be expected for your personal life. So Mike even challenged me in this process of building the classroom. He was like, you need to go check with Sabria and make sure she's okay right now and that you're doing what you need to do while you're crazy busy. And I did, I went home that night and we talked about that. And we've been in constant communication this entire week during launch to make sure expectations were right. And um, like I said, after all this is done, after tonight is done, I'm going to be chilling out a lot. I'm going to be backing off of work. I'm going to go run my marathon in New York City. I'm going to go do my personal life. You know, I've I've been honestly beholden to this for a while because I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted it to be everything that we dreamed it would be. And I don't know, my expectations were blown away with this team and getting it done in the time frame we did. Um, so, so proud of it. But sometimes there's this scene, this season of hustle and grind and doing the thing you've been going after but that's not a sustainable thing to do. You got to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. You got to make sure you're taking care of yourself mentally, physically, relationally. I'm in therapy right now. I'm, I'm chatting with my therapist on Wednesday. It's our first time talking in three weeks because I've been so busy. He even called me and was like, 
it's not it's is it not it's this week not gonna work and i was like yeah man he, he's like i know i know it's gonna be crazy that's totally cool we can catch back up when it's all over um that has been monumental for me in understanding myself and my past and my present and my relationships and at the end of the day if i carry a philosophy that cares so much about legacy and family and the most important people in my life then i better be taking care of that in my own life right i better the proof better be in the pudding um it would be incredibly um it would be incredibly hypocritical if i'm teaching this stuff and that and if my family life was just in shambles so communication expectations um chilling out doing things that you can for yourself um but still like still hustling but carve out time for your own personal life and don't let your relationships fall by the wayside okay okay it's beaker i love this beaker the muppet <laughs> it's beaker is it a bad idea to do things for free for friends and family to get a sizable portfolio so i have something to advertise my vision and work with um we did a full-on rally caps episode about this <laughs> steven's already getting up because he knows he's about to get called out uh go follow rally caps <laughs> we did an entire episode about working for free it's been one of our most i feel like one of our most popular episodes yep. People loved it. Yeah, it's it's one of the most popular episodes of season two, I think. Yes, it is because we really go into de in depth about what it means to work for free and mm -hmm. what that can mean for marketing your business and eventually landing stuff, mm -hmm. landing jobs. So I'd recommend going and watching that. That's a good forty-five to fifty minutes of just us talking about that, giving great stories and examples mm -hmm. from the past, and also me sharing how I made fifteen thousand dollars by working for free mm -hmm. for a friend. Yep. So. Go check that out. And the short answer is yes. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Just, just do it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, think about it less. Do more. Uh, invest Invest in things that take up your time. Maybe it's not necessarily money, um, but maybe you're sacrificing your time as an investment to build that portfolio of work and um, make more work for yourself in the future. Oh, sick. Hey, come share what you're doing. <laughs> this is Bean, everybody. Bean's part of Creative Club as well. He's one of the founding members. Hello, everybody. Um, duck down. Wait, duck down. You're oh, you're I have my head. You're, you're like tall. Six foot two. Six foot. Yeah, one. I don't know what this looks like. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it can't it's delayed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, share what you're doing right now. So we uh, shoot. Is this the mic? Okay. It great. is. Okay. Hey. I just I don't know. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> I was going to start yelling. Um, so here at Creative Club, we have a side hustle kind of like Creative Club Film Lab. Uh, we all shoot film here. I think all of us do, right? At this point, yeah. At this point, yeah. We all shoot film. And uh, to save money, we decided to develop ourselves. So tonight we have about 11 or 12 rolls of 35 millimeter film and tw seven, nine, seven to nine, 120 more medium format. Are you, are you oh. yeah. we maybe we got to figure that out. So there's we have a, we have a ton to develop. Pick me. Pick me. And Stevens. <laughs> so we have a ton to develop. Uh, we're probably not going to get to all of it tonight, but we're going to start prepping because after this live, we're going to do some uh, film developing and scanning, even maybe. And if you all need your film developed or scanned, feel free to reach out to anybody here at Creative Club, and we can set you up with it because um, it's a lot of fun and it's really cool just like opening your email and uh, seeing your film photos. So, yeah. Sick. This Sick. is developer. Yeah. Well, this, oh, this is Blix. This is the, the developer. developer, and then this is the Blix. The two main chemicals you need. Yeah, don't drink them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we've got we've got all the chemicals you need here. It's it's really fun. So we got to heat, heat them all up, put the, like, rip open all the canisters, and then put them in the chemicals. and. Rex, you want to grab a, like, a yeah. one? So oh yeah. yeah. So we have a bunch of negatives just hanging off to the side here, which is always kind of par for the course. So this is a film strip of 120. Uh, this was shot. Oh, this online. is yours. Yeah, this That's is Colin mine. Steingard. This is some portrait that's shot Shout of out our Colin. Colin. This is shot on a Pentax 67. So this is six by seven on the medium format scale. Mm -hmm. You also have six by six and six by four five. Duck down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, can you grab a 35 as well? Yes. So the difference between medium format and 35 right. mil, you can see a sizable difference. And all of the format of the 35 mil, oh, this is mine. Oh, 
This is my child being Been born. Sitting there for a while. We need to scan this. It's very important. <laughs> Wait, did we scan it? I don't know. I don't know. We've been so busy on the classroom. Anyway, uh, the difference of size is obviously like double, if not triple, on the one twenty. Especially version. on six. Yeah, by we seven. need to scan this. It's very important. It's my child being born. I don't think I need that. Okay, let's do that tonight. Yep. Awesome, friends. I love you. They developed it for me too. They're the best. Okay, uh, let's get back to questions. Awesome. Getting confirmation. Everything looks and sounds great. Awesome. 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 Team is just working from everywhere right now. It's epic. Okay, cool. All right. Abdullah, you're an amazing filmmaker. Keep the good work. Thank you so much, Abdullah. I really appreciate that. Um, Aaron says, hey, Eric, really want to sign up, but I don't think I can fin financially at this time. When will this course be open again? Um, thank you for being honest. Um, I totally understand where you're coming from. I totally understand that it's an investment. I do want everyone to know that you don't have to purchase everything as a bundle. You can get the photo by itself or the video by itself. And um, with that, you can also upgrade at any time once you're enrolled before midnight Eastern tonight. Um, but we just can't, we can't confirm when it will be open again. We have every intention of opening enrollment again in the future. We just don't know when that can be based on the availability of everybody in the team launching it again, making all the assets and videos and content and design, new website. Um, so we just don't know when that would be. And we don't know what that will cost because over the next handful of months, we're going to be adding more and more to the course, to the classroom to fill in any missing gaps that students feel like they want any other things answered, maybe go in depth more make more PDFs, someone recommended that maybe we do um, a contract that is um, writable. You know, you can basically fill in the gaps. We have all the clauses there, but you just write in your name and you can make your own contract. So things like that we want to be adding. So because that stuff will be added, we can't guarantee it's going to be the same price next time either. But I want you all to know that there is an option to either get the photo one by itself or the filmmaking one by itself and you can finance it with 0% interest over six months. So that comes out to be $333 a month for an individual course. Um, and that could be paid with your credit card over six months instead of paying for all of it up front. So I just want you to know that all of those things are options. Um, and if you're interested in any of that, the classroom, it's linked down below in the description. And enrollment closes tonight in two and a half hours. We have two and a half hours left. So go ahead and check out the site and see um, everything that we have there, reviews, the description of every single module and what you'll be getting. It's 14 plus hours of content on each side. And there's some overlap. So if you get the bundle, it's 23 plus hours with more stuff that will be added in the future. Uh, someone asked, are we are we using StreamYard? Mm -mm, no, uh, is, I'm assuming that's a live streaming service. Oh, Chipotle's here, yes. I'm not going to do an ASMR thing though, Braxton. I know you want me to do that, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, okay. ASMR. What does ASMR stand for? Um, uh, something auto. I'm not even going to try. I'm going to embarrass myself. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah says, Hey, love the channel. Thank you. Um, how do I go about increasing pricing? What's the process behind that for you? Um, so it's all about demand. It's all about feeling, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you feel like you're getting enough inquiries, um, where if you raise those prices, you won't be mad if you lose someone because they feel like you're too expensive. But I recommend raising your prices $500 to $750 at a time every year if the demand meets you. So if you're at that, excuse me, if you're at that place where you're at tw like 25 weddings a year, oh man, this is like the holy grail. Ah, I, I, yeah, I'm gonna save it because I'm okay. I'm okay. I can keep going. Um, I'll eat eventually. I'll eat when I die. Um, but yeah. So where was I on that? Yeah. If you know, at that, at the point where I was at like 25 weddings a year, I wanted to be in the 30, 35 range, but virtually every single inquiry was booking that came in was booking. And that was a clear indication that I was underpriced. And because everyone was like, Oh, this is a deal. It's, it's a steal. I'm going to book. Boom. Um, so that was an indication that I could raise my prices, that I had that ability, that I had that scope um, to, to, elevate those prices. And then people started booking at those prices. So yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's all dependent on where you are. And I would I would recommend in a healthy way having conversations with people around you based on your skill level, if they're near your skill level, if they're in your city, if they're in your market, ask around and see what other people are charging to see if that is kind of the bracket you should be in and seeing and comparing your work. Okay, am I at their level? Okay, I should be charging this range. Um, maybe their work is this much better than me. They're this many years ahead of me. So maybe I should be this far back in my pricing. Asking them, what were you charging two years ago? Okay, that gives me a good idea of where I should be. Um, and then mitigating then when demand increases, then you should probably be increasing your prices as well. Again, in that 500 to $750 a year range is what I recommend. Um, okay, break to if you're enjoying this, if you feel like it's beneficial to you, if you're learning, if this is helpful in any way, if you could like it, it just pushes like the video with the little thumbs up underneath to push this out to more of my subscribers and people who might be listening right now who might find this helpful, um, who want to hear uh, me answer all these questions, industry questions. Andy, thanks, boss. You're welcome. Um, okay, Alanya, what do I do on days where I fall into mental uh, productivity slump, especially during these times of lockdowns and isolation? And when it gets darker outside sooner, I hear you. How do I kick myself back into gear? For me, running is so helpful for me. It gets me out of the house. It keeps me healthy. It gives me something to work towards outside of business. So for me, marathon training blocks are so helpful for me. I'm at the end of one right now. I'm running my New York City Marathon on Sunday. I'm so, so, so excited for it. I connect with more people outside of the realm of wedding photography and filmmaking, and that's really cool. Like, I'm really hoping I can see Seth James Demore this weekend. I'm really hoping I might see Kofuzi out on the course. These are running YouTubers that I keep up with. And this goes into what I talk about in the classroom with inspiration. Your inspiration shouldn't just be coming from wedding photographers and wedding filmmakers, but should rather be coming from a multitude of things. And so if you can get out and exercise and get some fresh air, please do that. Like get outside, uh, you know, like you might be locked down. If you can get out and get, get out and get some fresh air and some vitamin D from the sun, please do that. We were not designed to not have that. Um, we, we need that. So I would highly recommend doing that. Um, that's that in itself. But then like, keep up with people that you're close with. Like send a text to your parents if they're around or capable, if you're capable of doing that. Like get on the phone with them. Keep up with the relationships with the people that are important to you. Let them know your struggles. Like let your community be therapy for you. If you have the means to do therapy or have a counselor. I highly recommend that as well. I've been doing that this year. It's been so helpful for me. So um, yeah, do something like if you have the finances, sometimes a piece of gear or even just like a, a light or a, a can of mist or aerosol or something that might like get you excited about making something creatively. There's no shame in, in purchasing something like that to motivate creativity. Um, so yeah, all of those things. <laughs> whoop, whoop. What up, ZC Films? Wow, I'm. I feel like I'm doing pretty good on questions. Am I really far back? I don't know if I'm really far back or not. Oh shoot! Oh, Matt Johnson's in here. If you ain't bought the classroom yet, you're missing out. <laughs> Thanks, Matt Johnson. I love you and your beard. Okay, I am pretty far back. I'm sorry. All right, still trying to plow through this. How do I get so so many subscribers? I've been trying for a year, but it's hard. Guess what? It's the most important thing I should know about success on YouTube. Value. Bring the value, and it's. It's just about giving people something that they appreciate and they appreciate so much that they're willing to push that little red button. That's what I can boil it down to. Maybe that's value for their own business. Maybe that's value based on entertainment. Maybe that's value in any other kind of way or consistency about something that they like. So the running YouTubers I watch, they post every single day and it's so fun to keep up with their training. Um, I don't recommend you post every single day. I think that's like... I don't understand how they do that and have a healthy personal life, but that's another conversation. Um, ultimately, I want to make sure that I'm giving value on my YouTube channel more than anything. That I'm constantly, I'm, I'm not just doing something where it's like, this live stream is a prime example of that. I could just be on here and I could just be selling the classroom nonstop. You know, I could be... I could be talking about every single module and I could be nonstop just trying to sell people, trying to convince them this is the right thing to do for their business, even though it might not be. 
I want to be authentic in who I am and what I care about and my philosophy, but I also want to bring value. So if I can give some advice that's going to change someone's life and trajectory of their business in a matter of three minutes by doing something this, like this and selling my course at the same time because it might be beneficial to someone in a different way, I love doing both of those things. And I think this kind of stuff is what makes it compelling for people to want to follow along and feel that sense of value that they're receiving, if that makes sense. Do we... We have someone else who signed up for the classroom. Pablo Monroy on photo. Thank you, Pablo. Oh my goodness. Every time a new person enrolls to the classroom in this live stream, it's just blowing my mind. It's so fun to see that you guys are um, wanting to invest in yourself this way and doing this. Uh, I so appreciate the support. It's so fun to see that people are wanting to learn in this way and are seeing this as an investment in themselves. Um, I do have to keep reminding everyone we are almost up to two hours left on enrollment and then it's going to be closing. It's closing at 11.59 Eastern time uh, tonight. And if you need to check out the website, check out the classroom. It is down below in the description. Um, I have to make sure my texts are all good to go with the the team and everything. Are we good? I don't need to be doing anything else right now. Good? Okay, cool. We're good. All right. Um Maybe, Stephen, could you jump on Instagram DMs for me and answer a few if you need? If Yeah. Oh, you have it on your phone. Yes, sir. Team. Dang. Hashtag team. Um, yeah, if you can answer any of those on my behalf or just be like, send a video or photo, be like, hey, Eric's on the live stream right now, but this is Steven. I'm part of the team. And, oh, yeah, we're doing a video right now. Oh, flip it around. Thanks, Fernando. Thanks for signing up. Yeah, Fernando. Welcome to the classroom. Epic. Uh, awesome. Okay, let's get back to these questions. St. Pio Films. How do I... Oh, I already asked, answered that. Thank you for asking. Okay, as a freelance and corporate commercial filmmaker of two years, would this course be right for me to transition into starting getting wedding clients? Only second shot one wedding once with the intent to go full-time. 100%. Yes. Um, it's designed... It's mostly designed for anyone looking to go from like side hustle to full time. That's really the goal, but you already established which is awesome. You might have a income that affords you the opportunity to invest in something like this right now. That's the perfect, um, because you can feel confident in that investment right now and still have work as an option for diversification of your business. So you could be shooting commercial and wedding at the time, which is epic. I hope that helps. Okay. Excuse this nasty sound from my face. Oh, it's just so much congestion. Okay. Maybe I can blow my nose. Could you like maybe get me a, a paper towel and then I can like get it far away from the microphone? Okay. Okay. Branislav says, hey, Eric, I start um, starting to make wedding videos a few years ago. And since I moved to Canada, I took more and more weddings till now taking 1900 Canadian. But now I feel like uh, feel and I know that my work is worth more. Raised your prices double, but now people just run away after the first email once I send them a pricing list. So if they're running away, I would definitely recommend bringing those prices back down to get more work in your portfolio. Thank you so much. And forgive me, I'm going to run away from the microphone for a second. Oh, Ew. disgusting. Ew. So this is the film developer packet that we're going to use. <laughs> you mix that with water? You mix this with water. Um, there's three different things. And then um, and then you use it. You, we buy like 10 of these at a time. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Intermission over. Done blowing my nose. Okay. Um, the goal is to constantly have enough work. You don't want to overprice yourself so much that you're not booking anything anymore. So if that means you have to bring prices back down a bit, there's no shame in doing that. There's also no shame in, in diversifying your work by doing some commercial work, maybe doing a commercial for the business down the street or taking a few family photos or doing other kinds of portrait sessions. Like there is no shame in diversifying that way. And um, yeah, and if you have to charge less to book more weddings right now, so you have content to be able to share that you're, you're doing weddings, that can give you time to keep improving in your craft and improving in your skill set and your client experience. And the weddings that you do book, you have to go above and beyond for them. You have to serve them. You have to surprise them with stuff. You have to be intentional with them. You want them at the end of the night to just be like, my favorite thing clients say to me at the end of a wedding night is, you made today so much better. 
like you just made the experience so much more fun. And when I hear that, it just like, it makes me melt knowing that I was a part of their day that made them feel like they experienced it to uh, like just a, a more uh, to experience more joy. I'm sorry. I get distracted every time Steven <laughs> gets the Sharpie out <laughs> to say someone else signed up for the classroom because it just gets me hyped. And I'm so hyped to read everybody's name and roles before, before midnight here. Um, okay. Who do we have? Michelle Salgado got the bundle. Hey. Wow. She got photo and video. Welcome to the classroom. I feel like Jimmy Fallon doing the thank you notes yeah. every time. I started this live the stream dramatic. with his, uh, with his song. I was like, Hey, 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 hey. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, 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 hey. Epic. Okay. Sweet. All right. Let's jump to more. Jake Garman says fastest way to upload galleries. I have three weddings, about thousand images each to upload and would like to hear your suggestions. Just bought the filmmaking class. Oh, Justin, what's up? Were you one of the names I just read? You were. Victoria. Oh no, there's Justin Jew here. I don't know if it was in this live stream, um, but oh yeah, it was. Oh yeah, got the epic. Okay, so Justin, honestly, I don't use this service, but Steven does. JPEG Mini is a oh. JPEG Mini is a way to compress your JPEG files without any resolution loss. So that is less data that you have to store, and it's going to be faster uploads for you. Do you recommend JPEG Mini, Steven? Come on over. Come on over, baby. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> also, upgrade your internet. Yeah, internet. That's going to be the biggest you thing. You have fiber internet at your apartment. Yeah, fiber internet it has it's spoiled me. So it's fast. unbelievable. The upload and download are the same. It's Unfortunately, it's if you have slow internet, JPEG, well, JPEG Mini would be the thing that would help you a lot. Otherwise, you need to upgrade the speed of your internet. Yeah, but no gallery service provider is going to have Make it a faster. faster speed. The one benefit of Pick Time actually is that they allow you to upload social media sized uh, uploads first and then do a like high res uh, upload of that. So okay. if you had really bad internet, you could upload stuff to Pick Time. You could at least send a preview gallery of social media sized files first while the like high res files upload also usually for me though when i upload galleries i just carve out time in my day where i'm like i'm just gonna let that sit and go for a while or i do it overnight and then send it the next day yep. um so i'd recommend getting into that rhythm but pick time and pixie set all have plugins to lightroom so that when you export it will just start uploading straight to um pick time or to wherever you are yeah. as well we need to change out the battery in that because it's about to die. Deal. Is that going to stop the live stream? Probably. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, or maybe not. We'll find out. If we go black for a second, yeah. Get a battery first. JPEG Mini and better internet. Oh, wait, wait. If we could plug in and find the. Um, oh my gosh. It's like, this is like, um, what's it called? Mission yes. <laughs> I was like Tom Cruise. Mission Impossible. Uh, I think the charger might be in the tall cabinet over here. Or you could just get. Is that one all charged up? Yeah. Okay. Swap it out real fast. I'm just going to go dark for a second and then hopefully I come back. If not, then we're just going to relaunch the live stream. Okay. Here we go. Three. So, oh yeah. Find the charger first. Okay. I'm going to answer another question and how much Should we have four minutes, four minutes to do. Okay. I'm panicking. <laughs> All right. Where's the charger? <laughs> um, it's not on the shelf. Okay. All right. All right. Jazz Casto says, just the, got the photographer course. So stoked. Let's go. I don't know if I said your name. I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, so pumped to hear that. So awesome. Okay. Cheyenne, I know you got it. Thank you so much. Felt your heart in every word you said. I'm so stoked to learn from you. Oh my gosh. That's so fun. Thank you so much for enrolling. Um, it's just so exciting to hear you guys say these things. And I hope you enjoy it so much. How do you do business and YouTube? Oh yeah. Okay. So th this is a pretty broad question, but as far as business goes with me and YouTube, I do. Oh, we, did we find the charger? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> part of a charger. It, yeah, it is. But yeah, one of them is broken. So I probably just switch out a battery would be fine. Um, business and YouTube. I, I'm, trying to upload wedding films when it's when it's um, possible on my YouTube channel that I feel like is a portfolio piece that I want that represents my work um, where it is in the current status 
Um, but I'm also doing sponsorships with different brands. Like I've partnered with Musicbed, I've partnered with PickTime, I've partnered with Unscripted, I've partnered with Artgrid, Artlist, um, Polar Pro. A lot of the industry um, businesses that are related to wedding photography and wedding filmmaking will reach out once a channel gets to a certain size to do sponsored content like that. And it's just a matter of trying to get engaging content or content that's so engaging that it's getting the kind of views and um, the notoriety for that brand that they feel like is a good return on their investment. Um, I'm really passionate about that. I'm interested in in making more educational content about that diversification of my business. I do touch on it uh, pretty in depth in module 10 of classroom in marketing without marketing. Um, but that's something I'm really passionate about. So I'm excited to see what that could look like in the future as well. All right. I think we're in a place where we just need to swap out the battery. I don't think we're going to find the charger right now. It might be in Mike's case right there. The big one. Yep. Is it, does it have a big rectangle charging block? That's it. No, it's not. Yeah, no, that's the that's the battery charger. <laughs> Just do the battery. <laughs> yep, okay. We're going to go dark for a second, and then hopefully it comes back. Is it back? Uh, it's going to... It's back. It's back? Is it back? Is it back? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Epic. Okay, we're back. All right. Um, how do I go about advertising? That's everything. I cover everything about that in module 10 of the classroom. The short story is building relationships and finding community and letting the relationships of industry friends be your marketing, be your referral-based system and let your existing clients be your marketing for you, serving them so well that they actually refer you to all of your future clients. And that web ends up being something that is entirely sustainable for you as you continue to diversify your business in whatever capacity it is, whether it's bringing on associates, making a YouTube channel, doing commercial work, buying an Airbnb and getting some passive income. Like all that stuff is fair game when you are a creative and can have those side hustles or ways to grow your business. Um, and then all that stuff becomes redundant because if you have a YouTube channel, you're advertising this part of your business naturally. And if you have an Instagram for your Airbnb, you're advertising your photography and all these things can complement each other, which is super, super cool. Stream is lagging. Dang it. Sorry. Well, it went black for a second, but I think we're good. Okay. That was like an hour ago. Oh, are you serious? Uh, yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm this far behind. That's a, the question now. Like, I feel bad. Do I jump to new questions? To shorter answers. Shorter answers. Okay. I'm really bad at being long-winded. I'm sorry. Okay. Almighty question, how to book more? Invest in yourself. Invest in education. Uh, that's not just a pitch. It doesn't need to be my course. It could be something else. Um, invest in the technical part. So binge YouTube videos and get better. But work for free, work for cheap, fill your portfolio and take everything that comes your way so that it could lead to more work. Relationship building is always going to be how you book an extensive amount of work, whether it's relationship with potential clients, relationship with other photographers and filmmakers, relationships with planners or other industry people. Relationships will always get your foot in the door. Follow Tom, bonus footage. This is so far behind. Oh my gosh. Yong Kong is here. Heart to heart stories. Let's go. Just wanted to swing by and say hi. What's up? I don't know if you're here anymore, but thank you for joining. <laughs> will the course go away after tonight? It will go away for a while, an indefinite amount of time. We are closing it indefinitely. Um, like I said, our goal is to open it up in the future. We just can't guarantee when that's going to be based on um, our availability as a team and launching this whole thing again. Um, Matt Johnson. <laughs> Thanks for being my fiercest hair advocate, bearded man. Um, Daniel McDee, thanks so much for answering. You're welcome. Uh, hopefully I can get myself started shooting weddings and family soon. Awesome. From Scotland. Let's go. Scotland in the house. Is PayPal accepted? Yes, PayPal is accepted on the classroom. Um, I think you can pay in full with PayPal. 
what is this course everyone's been talking about? It's linked down in the description, the classroom, um, wedding photography, wedding filmmaking. Uh, someone says the hold fast always catches the shirt. Yeah, I know. I can tell you already, this isn't really catching anything. I've had a wonderful experience with the Clever Supply double harness. Um, go check out Clever Supply Co. on Instagram. Clever, you could maybe link it in the chat. Steven, thank you. Um, Jenna says, skip to my question. Can anyone here give me insight? I'm sorry, Jenna. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, it comes back later. comes back later. Okay, we'll get to it. I'm so sorry. Um, awesome. Ethan, hey, thanks for answering my comment. I'm actually 16. Whoa, working my way up to becoming a wedding photographer. Still haven't shot a wedding yet. I plan to be a second shooter next year. Awesome, perfect. Yes, PayPal's accepted. Awesome. Just curious is if the free course expires tonight. You know, honestly, we were saying it was going to, but I think we might leave it live. In any capacity, make sure you get it before midnight in case we don't leave it live because that was the first intention. And I don't know if we'll have to like remap that. But um, I think for the content that we have from this week, we'll probably still link that free module so people can still get a taste of what the classroom is like for when it opens in the future, if it does. Jenna said, I currently pay for Squarespace for my website and Pixie Set for the galleries. But now that Pixie Set is offering contracts and invoices, should I just do all of it through Pixie Set at this point? Honestly, it makes sense if you really like Pixie Set, that is a great option for you because now it's your CRM, your client relationship manager. It is your website. Um, it is where you deliver everything. So if that is a place where you can house everything all in one, sounds pretty dang great. And to be honest, I really wish PickTime would jump in on the CRM train as well, but I am really satisfied with doing PickTime and HoneyBook. That combination really is good for me and my workflow right now. How many enrollments have happened throughout this week? Great question. Uh, I think we might have crossed 100. We just hit 100. That's incredible. So now there's going to be 100 people in the classroom, which means uh, not everybody's been joining the Facebook because they might not have Facebook or they didn't watch that video and we're going to have to hound them and try to get them in there. But you can, you can absolutely guarantee that there's going to be near or over 100 people in that Facebook group if you enroll in the classroom. That's just super, super epic and awesome that 100 people are part of it now and just very, very encouraging. Two new people. Two new people on the classroom. Alex Everett bought the photo course. Thank you, Alex. So pumped to have you in the classroom. And Nick Reagan. I think Reagan or Regan. I don't know. It's R-E-G-A-N. Bought the filmmaking course. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you for the support and our support of making the classroom and investing in yourself and doing that. Guys, this is insane. Since we started this live stream, that's one. Let's see. We have one. These are sticky notes. They're hard to pull apart. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 people have signed up and enrolled in the classroom since the start of this live stream. And I have to do my due diligence in letting you guys know we only have two hours left until enrollment closes on the classroom. So if you're on the fence, like, please let me be here to, to let you know that you can jump off that fence. It's a small fence. You won't get hurt if you jump off. It'll be, you'll land. <laughs> this is, this analogy is going way off. It's bad. Okay. Um, I do want to let you know if you enroll tonight and if you already have enrolled, we are giving away a full bundle of the classroom for free. So we're refunding some one person who signs up, um, who already signed up or who is signing up tonight. So you might win that if you jump in and, and purchase tonight before enrollment closes. Okay, here we go. All right, Steven just lighting it up in the chat and helping me out. Thank you, my confidant, my friend. Um, can you drop a link or search phrase for that? Did you, you already got that handled? Rally caps, gotcha. <laughs> Mike said, hi, Bean. Um, epic, epic, epic. Let me get back to where I was. Matthew, I have like 6,400 feet of expired black and white film that needs to be shot. Help. <laughs> we can maybe help you develop that. Um, just just let us know. <laughs> we, we're, I don't know if we're taking inquiries for a film lab yet, but we'll see. Um, let's talk more about therapy. Yes, Aaron, let's. It's been life-changing for me in recognizing who I am and where I come from and how I can be healthy uh, mentally and physically and and spiritually and with relationships i've just really really loved it and i recommend it to anybody who might be thinking about it therapy is awesome and shouldn't be stigmatized woo join just in time pablo let's go pablo join the classroom just in time i love it 
Um, it's Beaker is back. I love it. Me and my buddy are going to start doing video together. Awesome. Is there any equipment I should get as a beginner and anything I should avoid? That's a great question. I have a few YouTube videos that might be really helpful. If you dig through the library of my videos, um, I have one about audio gear. Hey, Steven, could you put these videos in the chat? Um, my audio gear video, audio is so important to wedding filmmaking to capture speeches and vows and first look and all that stuff. So I link a bunch of stuff there. It's a little outdated. Um, I, I go through all of my newest gear in the classroom, but making sure you have something like a Tascam DR10L, which is a lav mic or a, um, a Zoom H5 for recording out of a speaker with an XLR cable um, or a Zoom F2, which does 32 bit float and has a lav mic. Um, recently, I don't have one with me in the other room, the Sony IC DUX. So IC Ducks, IC DUX. I can't remember the number of that one, 540, I think. It's a little clip mic that you can literally like clip to lapels and clip to shirts. And like, you can just stick this mic anywhere. We used it in the course for backup audio and had to use it a few times and it's incredible. Um, Honestly, the audio is what I would recommend. If you can also get your hands on a light, like a halogen bulb light. I know Lowell Pro, L-O-W-E-L, -L, Lowell Pro makes awesome constant lights. They have a new version. I would recommend getting it with the barn doors. And um, again, I go through all this stuff in depth in the classroom, if that's something you're interested in getting. Um, but scour, scour my YouTube videos. I have a playlist called Tutorials where you can just kind of thumb through those and I, I give recommendations on gear. I did another one um, that was sponsored by Music Bed, where I talk about like the like seven first steps in filmmaking. Um, that's really helpful as well. Austin, thanks for mentioning therapy. Awesome. I'm in therapy myself, and it's a big part of my life. I just want to shout out my photography podcast, Lens Talk, which is all about self-care for photographers. Thank you, Austin. Um, I'm going to bring that up in another tab, Lens Talk Podcasts. Lens Talk Podcast. Go check it out, guys. Lens Talk Podcast. Um, very cool. Dang, a bunch of five-star ratings. I'm going to have to listen to this. Thanks for mentioning that. Thanks for mentioning that, Austin. Um, I'll go have to check it out. Another Austin. I'm second shooting my first wedding this Saturday. What should I prioritize? And how can I best help the main photographer? I would have a conversation with them now, early, before the weekend, and ask this question to them. How can I be of help to you? Are you going to care more about me shooting extensively? Are you going to care more about me helping you with gear and getting you water and snacks and that stuff? No matter what, I would recommend doing that latter part. Like Help and assist in every single way you can to make sure that they're performing at their optimal level. Um, that is so helpful as a second shooter. But really try to dial in what their need is as far as shooting and how you can just help them feel comfortable and feel assisted and feel like the coverage is comprehensive. So talk to them and figure out what those things are and then show up with some snacks and show up with some water and just hand that stuff to them throughout the day. Don't even like, don't even ask them if they want that. Just bring that and at one point just be like, hey, you need some water? I got some right here. Here you go. Hey, you want a snack? I got a, I got some snacks to choose from. Like, I can't even tell you how amazing that is as a first shooter to have a second shooter come up and do that. And they will absolutely want you back if you do stuff like that for them and you show up and shoot correctly. Hi, what's up? Um, okay, okay, okay. Clever Supply is tagged in here. Go check out Clever Supply. Amazing. That's the double strap that I'm wearing right now. It's a prototype. Very pumped for this thing to come out. I'm definitely going to be making content about this. Peak design integration with these clips on the bottom. So, so sick. Um, thanks, subscribe. See you in the next live stream. Epic. Thanks, St. P.O. Films. Shout out. Thank you for subscribing. What is this honey service you use? Honeybook is what I use. Uh, I mention it a ton in the course. Actually, the free module is where I mention it. So if you go and check module seven, we talk about my whole workflow in Honeybook with my assistant. It's a full hour long, almost hour long portion of um, that module. And yeah, uh, there's also a part on the classroom website where I think we titled it deals. There's a tab up at the top called deals, and that will link you to Honeybook as one of those 
And I know I don't know if there's a discount code in there. You can just go check out that link. If there is a discount code, feel free to use it. And that would be a, an affiliate kickback for me um, if you do that. So yeah, I love HoneyBook. It's awesome. And it helps you with contracts and ma file management and con um, uh, client communication and just like all the business side of things. Tim Sauer, yo, teach. Tim, you got to get back here to Creative Club. I want to hang with you. Michael, got to run to work. Love you guys. Love you, Michael. Thanks for tuning in. Ooh, ooh. After Michael, Jonathan invested in the course during my lunch break. Let's go. Earlier today. I hope you enjoy it so much, Jonathan. I hope you get so much out of it. I hope it takes your business to the next level. Guys, the classroom is closing tonight at midnight Eastern time, 1159 Eastern. It is closing. That is less than two hours from now. So that is when you can get in. Mike is here. Hi, Mike. Um, so yeah, just trying to get in. Um, th this has been available all week and I just want to do my due diligence on making sure everybody knows that, uh, enrollment is going to be closing and closed for good, uh, at night Eastern time, 1159 Eastern. So emails are going out. There's gonna be one more email blast one hour before I texted my community text list, um, DMs on Instagram. You have a lot. I have a lot. I'm so sorry. Um, oh, Anna sent me a really nice text. Anna, Anna Brace, you're freaking awesome. Thank you so much. She's like, enjoy your time off. So proud of me. <laughs> Anna, I love you. Um, lots of DMs. I'm so sorry. Uh, okay. I think we're pretty much caught up on the DMs though. Um, I think we're good. Kristen's like watching the live stream and asking me if, she, if I need help on DMs. No, I think we're all caught up on DMs. Matthew just sent to me. <laughs> Matthew, who is a student in the course, is he's like, you guys are on you guys are on TV. <laughs> I love that. I love how meta the internet is. <laughs> like opening up different platforms and seeing like the live stream on Instagram. And oh, it's so good. Um, Matt Adachi DM, you can give me the free one. <laughs> That's my college roommate. I love you, Matt. Uh okay, cool. I think we're all caught up there. Epic, epic, epic. Um and as you guys saw, if you are um, if you are watching this or have been watching this, everybody that's been enrolling in the classroom during this live stream, we are just giving you a, a shout out whenever an order comes in. Um, so if you're on the fence and you're ready to make that purchase, I would love to shout you out on this live stream. Um, so yeah, let's see. Medina says advice for starting your business. Super broad question, but a great question. Uh, be like, attack it simply don't feel overwhelmed with all the things that are there because there are a million things that you can do with growing a business start simple charge what you feel comfortable charging take it one step at a time learn things as you go watch a ton of youtube videos and just don't overwhelm yourself with all the things that quote unquote need to be done it's okay to have something simple for a while but if you want to just jump all the way in you can invest in something like the classroom. You could watch a ton of YouTube videos. You could subscribe to someone's Patreon. I have a Patreon. Sam Hurd has a Patreon. Ben Heish has a Patreon. Tons of people in the industry have resources for education. You could go to a workshop. You could buy a course online. That's a way to fast track all that information. But you can also do it slowly if you have your own uh, full-time job and you want to just do a side hustle. That's what I did. I just kind of learned as I went. And it was a slow process. But I made some. I made the classroom so that people could literally expedite that process quickly, so that they could they could be on the fast track to making that happen so much faster. Maybe make that happen in a six month time frame or a year time frame instead of having to take you know five years to do that and get to full time like I did. Eric said, "Had to stop to thank you for recommending Pick Time. My clients really enjoy the layouts. That's epic." And PickTime also, PickTime also has slideshows, and um, PickTime has the ability for you their, them to download their images. They can order prints through there. It's your one-stop shop for everything, and you can make passive income. If you got PickTime and you shoot twenty weddings a year, you could pay for the classroom pretty easily with print sales that you can make in a year. Just saying, like that's the kind of passive income you can expect. This year, I've only shot eight photo weddings. And I think I'm lined up to make five or six grand in passive income and print sales. It's amazing. Like that's, 
that's an average of, oh, math, real quick math, maybe six to 700 a wedding because some clients will order a full wedding album there and they design it themselves. They can design it themselves. So, so, so sick. Harrison, I love that you asked this question. I love that you're bold enough to ask this question. Why is the classroom so expensive? Just wondering because I'm broke. Dude, I totally, I totally hear you. I totally hear that you're at that point um, in your career and I don't want to discourage you. I don't want you to feel like this is your only opportunity to learn information. It's not. My YouTube channel is available. Go jump, please. Go jump on my Patreon. It's 10 bucks a month. That's it. That's like a Chipotle burrito every month. You can learn tons of stuff there. There's all sorts of sources and places where you can learn the information it's going to take to get a business going. You don't have to do the classroom right now. That's just a way to do it quickly and to get all the information in the same place. Please don't feel discouraged. Um by it feeling too expensive right now. The truth is for many people right now, that investment is doable. You know, at this point we have over a hundred people enrolled and that is something that is very doable because they are established and they have that first step of income in their business and they're ready to invest more. Um, so keep saving, keep going after it. And the truth, the, the truth is right now, if you're in, uh, you know, the first couple of years of, of wedding photography or wedding filmmaking, this course at the price point that it's at, my my catchphrase this whole time in selling the classroom has been, if I can just book you one more wedding, if I can book you one more, I can get that one more client for you, this course will pay for itself. Um, the solo course is $19.98. It's just under $2,000. And we did it over a six-month payment period with 0% interest. So it's the same exact cost over six months if you want to finance it to soften the blow that way. Um but like I said, if I can just get you one more booking in that beginning year's price range, about the $2,000 range, it will pay for itself, okay? I hear Steven squeaking away. It sounds like we have another enrollment in the classroom. Um, I'm gonna shout it out as soon as he brings it over to me. Uh, let's see here. We got Gavin Legaspi, got the bundle, got photo and video. And if you do get the bundle, it is your highest value because there is overlap. There's three modules that are the same. 24 module totals, 24 modules total in the bundle. Three modules are the same, but it's 23, 24 plus hours content between the two and 14 hours, 14 plus 15 hours of content individually. Um, but you get it as buy one, get one free if you go with the bundle. Um, so it's $4.99 a month if you do the bundle and it's $3.33 a month if you do the solo. Um, and I got to keep mentioning it. We are closing enrollment for the classroom. Closing enrollment for the classroom um, at 11.15. At my brain is mush. 11.59 Eastern. That is less than two hours. Did we update the thumbnail? We've been, we've been changing the thumbnail all day on my YouTube video for the announcement of today being the close. And every hour we've been doing like two hours left. Three hours. Or how do numbers work? <laughs> last one was three hours. Then we have, we have two hours left. We need to switch it to two. Maybe just go tell Braxton to switch that to two real quick. Teamwork. Teamwork making the dream work, baby. Okay. Medina says, when it comes to charging money for photography work, how much did I charge? In the beginning, I charged like $100, $150 for a session. I think that's a great place to start. That's a really manageable place for people who are doing like a family session. Um, I delivered stuff via Google Drive, just digitally. Maybe you do that with a thumb drive or a flash drive to start. Um, or you even do that, yeah. Um, through Dropbox or yeah, whatever is convenient for them and cost effective for you. But starting simple is, is totally good and um, totally okay to do. Netty Rock 2, Aperture also has a really great LED light that's pretty affordable, the 60D or the 600X, or sorry, 60X. Yeah, the, the 60D is, is, oh yeah, that's not the super popular, the 120D is super popular on YouTube. I haven't checked those out. I really like the halogen bulb lights, the way they flare and the warmth. Um, there's just something to me so different than that versus an LED, but I'm, I'm more than happy with being challenged uh, with that as well. So got some videos to watch. Yeah. yeah, feel free to binge all the tutorial, the tutorial playlist on my YouTube channel. Guys, if you could do me a favor, you're still watching, you're in here and this is helpful for you. If you could like this video, it's just gonna push it to more people who are kind of browsing through YouTube right now. Um, getting into the late hours of the evening. I'm going to go ahead and jump on Instagram as well and go live on Instagram. So I'm getting the coverage across. Oh, another enrollment. Jordan Oliver, welcome to the classroom. 
Jordan got the photo course. Thank you so much for the support, Jordan, and investing in yourself and getting in the classroom. It's so sick. It's so cool every single time someone enrolls and I'm able to shout them out tonight. Um, thank you so much for making that investment and trusting us, um, trusting me with teaching you uh, what you need for your business. I'm going to jump to live on Instagram too to make sure everybody knows that this is happening. Let's go. Double live. Double live. I'm doing this because I saw Seth James Damore do it. He's a running YouTuber. And I'm telling you, inspiration from different places. People aren't on YouTube right now. So I'm, if they're not on YouTube and they're browsing through Instagram, I want to make sure that I get the Instagram fam here as well. What's up? Double, double live. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Instagram. I'm answering questions. If you want to submit a question, I'm not going to be answering any of them on the Instagram live, but I will be answering all the questions that are asked on the YouTube live stream. So please go ask your questions on the YouTube live. That doesn't make sense. Just, yeah, you can listen. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Um, all right. You can skip this. I did invest in the DBMH education. Was so disappointed. Now I'm scared to invest in other. I, I totally hear you. Um, one of the educators even educators even said they were all disappointed in their experience as well, but aren't even legally able to talk about it. Do plan on investing in the classroom next go around. Thank you so much, Jenna. I know it can feel so it can feel so disheartening um, when you have an experience like that. But like, I'm totally okay with people feeling like they need to save their money now if that's not the right investment right now that's a super smart choice um so yeah thank you for being honest um eric on lens talk make sure to check out the bloopers episode best one okay i'll make sure to do that i'm stoked to listen to that podcast now any advice on generating leads relationships 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 like get in with other photographers get in with other industry industry people make sure that you are getting as many relationships going as possible um, to promote your business and to get more inquiries. And you can go the Facebook route. You can go the Instagram route. You can go the wedding wire, the not that route as well. Um, but know that that is usually just a, a short season of your, of building your business because it becomes much more organic after that when you start working with, with clients and they start singing your praises and being your marketing for you. When planners start wanting to book you over and over, you get on their short list of, of uh, vendors. Um, so yeah, just, just get after it. Like go out and shoot and share all of the stuff that you do um, on your Instagram, post it on Facebook, post it in Facebook groups, post it uh, to all of your, you know, the people you graduated with in high school on your Facebook. Like that's a crazy good place to get free advertising of your visual work. Ben Ramos, all caps, listen up everybody. This is up for only available for two more hours. Yep. Classroom's only available for, we're less than two hours now. This course is, dude, Ben, thank you. This course is hands down the best thing out there to learn this industry and how to do this successfully, no matter what stage of the game you're at. I so appreciate you, Ben. If you book one wedding, one freaking wedding after listening to all freaking 11 to 20, it pays for itself. That's really I'm off the fence. It pays for itself. Okay. Thank you so much, Ben. Ben is my fiercest advocate and we filmed Ben's wedding uh, and I photographed it. Uh, ben and Emily, we just had them on the podcast on Rally Caps. Ben is an insanely successful Chicago wedding photographer him and his wife, Emily, run a coaching business called Bread and Honey. Can you link them in the chat? Steven, if you need any help with business coaching, go check out Bread and Honey. Uh, hey, Ben, you're scratching my back. I want to scratch your back. I want to show people um, that community is real and that we do help each other out. So go check uh, go check out Bread and Honey Co. Um, they, I don't know. If, is it Co at the end? It's just, yeah, it's Bread and Honey Co. And they're insane. They're so free. They're constantly posting uh, success stories of their um, their mentees and all the people they're helping make more money in their business. And they're just incredible, incredible people. So please go check out their Instagram, check out their website. And if that's something that's something that you feel like is going to benefit you rather than taking a classroom course like mine, and you want that personal connection, go check them out. Um, incredible resource. Um, 
Hey, here for the live stream, actually live this time. Let's go. <laughs> oh, TJ. Yup. TJ just bought really early in the week. So I will shout you out. TJ Roseman. I love you. Thank you for enrolling in the classroom. And um, thank you for the support. I always see your name pop up and really appreciate you. So thank you so much. Um, let's see. Consider you as one of my two photography teachers. Learned everything I know from you and Peter McKinnon. Thank you so much. That's really intimidating to be next to that name, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I don't know if somebody already asked this, but is the classroom going to be available after today or am I never going to be able to join it? Um, we can't guarantee that the classroom will be open in the future. Our goal and hope is to open up enrollment again, hopefully as early as next year. Um, but we just can't guarantee when that time is going to be based on the availability of the whole team being able to launch it again, being able to add to it more, being able to market it again. The past three months have been some of the most intense months of my life and career. Um, so we just want to make sure that that's the right time for all of us to do that again. Um, what I can guarantee is that um, enrollment is available through 11.59 tonight Eastern time. That's less than two hours from now. And there are options. You can pay for it in full, but there's also a six-month financing option with 0% interest. So that's available and you don't have to get the bundle. You could get each of them separately, just the photo course or just the filmmaking course. Uh, cool. Corey, if the course comes back, will the same payment options apply? That's also something we can't guarantee because um, we just have to see how this structure works over the next six months. And if it's something we, because we are taking a gamble on doing interest-free payments uh, with credit card because we, we technically take a hit for those payments more. It's the same cost to the consumer, um, but we actually pay more in processing fees every single time the card is charged instead of one charge at the beginning. Um, so I don't know if we can guarantee it. I would love to be able to do that again. That's my heart behind that was making sure that everyone could get it at the same price with also being able to spread it out over time without having to pay more for it. Um, even if that means that I have to take a hit um, financially for that sale, if that makes sense. Alternatives to Venmo nowadays. I love, so for clients, I love Chase QuickPay. It's the easiest. It's free. It's set up through Zelle. It's incredible. I like PayPal friends and family option. I just tell them to do that so that way I can uh, forego the 3% fee for business. Um, but HoneyBook also has an option. We, we charge a 3% fee on top of that. It is legal in Illinois, but it's not necessarily legal in every other state. So you just have to be careful about that. Check out your state if you're in the States. Um, Cash App is there, but I don't know. That feels kind of sketchy to me. <laughs> um, all of my electronic payments are done through Chase, QuickPay, PayPal, or uh, through HoneyBook, my CRM service where I do all my contracts and all that stuff. Steven, do we have someone else who enrolled? Yes, sir. Let's go. We got Juan Zabala. Juan on the photo side. Let's go, Juan. I think I recognize your name. I'm sorry. I've had so many conversations with people. I don't remember if we talked on DMs. I feel like we did. Thank you so much, Juan. I feel like it might have been live stream, actually. I don't know. If you're here, let me know. Thank you so much for investing in the classroom one. So epic. Thanks for investing in yourself and trying to take your stuff to the next level um, and trusting in me to teach you to get to that place. Um, every single one of these, I'm just blown away. Like seeing how many people have enrolled from this live stream. <laughs> it's really hard to flip through these, but this is like a solid 20 people that have enrolled since we started this live stream. And it's so freaking cool. And I want everybody to know that there's a Facebook group as well. Um, for anybody that does enroll in the classroom, there's going to be, uh, uh, there is already a Facebook group um, for everybody that has, for everybody that has enrolled in the classroom for sharing uh, things that happened and referrals with each other and answering each other's questions and creating community and all that amazing stuff. All right, I want to get back to questions. I want to keep giving you guys value in this. I don't just want to be mentioning the classroom. I do want to answer questions. Um, Jonathan Baumler, how am I? I'm tired, to be honest. Very tired. Marathon training and all of uh, the classroom stuff has just been crazy. Um, it's been really crazy to get all this stuff done and to get it out on time. But we're so, so, so proud of this product. And um, the end of this week marks uh, a very, very poignant part of my career, which I'm really 
really happy with. Um, a lot of sacrifices made. Um, I'm very excited to rest, to be honest. I'm very excited to run my marathon on Sunday, running the New York City Marathon. You can download the app and track me if you want to and cheer for me virtually if you'd like. Or if you're in New York City, you can come out and cheer for me in real life. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm, I'm really pumped. We're taking a full trip. Like the whole gang is going. And we have an Airbnb in New York. And I'm going to be running the marathon. and just super pumped about that. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to celebrating my wife's birthday next week after the marathon and just having a ton of family time. Um, yeah, so thanks for asking. Really appreciate that. You're welcome, you're welcome. Pablo, excited to learn about wedding photography from the course. Awesome. I'll be using it for quinceanera celebrations. So good. In my area this upcoming winter before jumping into weddings. How much do you think it overlaps? Tons. It's it, They're very similar events when it comes to party and dancing and portraits and family. Um, so all the technical stuff will be very, very similar in what you need to know in the lighting and composition and all that stuff. Um, but even just the business side as well, you can run all of your business very similarly and treat your clients very much the same way. And, you know, it's just one individual that has a spotlight versus two in a quinceanera versus, um, a wedding. So very much uh, tons of overlap. Eight to 10 family style shoots already pays for the course. Well, man, such a good investment. That's so sick. Yeah. Yeah. If you're at that price point, like absolutely. Um, if you're charging around $200, $250 for a family session, eight to 10 of those would pay for the course. And that could be done over the course of six months if you um, if you do that with the payment plan at 0% interest. Parth said, I'm not sure about getting the course because I don't know where I'm going um, with what I'm doing. Will there be another enrollment session? Yeah, we can't. we just can't guarantee when that's going to be in the future. We really want to make sure that um, at enrollment is possible again in the future. We just don't know when that will be based on the team's availability. Um, but it will be closing tonight in almost an hour and a half. We're going to the last leg. We're getting all the people who are on the fence, jumping off that fence and diving in and investing themselves in the classroom. Um, if you're on Instagram, it's linked in my description. If you want to check out the, the classroom website, there's still time, still an hour and a half to uh, go check it out and enroll but enrollment will be closed uh, at that time. So um, please make sure to um, to enroll before 1159 Eastern if you want to get in and invest in yourself in the classroom. Whew, my voice. Okay. Jack Turner, I'm an editor and videographer, but my main business is fil filming Instagram reels and ads. Oh, sick. Really trying to grow my business a bit bigger and want to do more video. Is it just for wedding videos? It is designed for wedding photography and wedding filmmaking, um, but there is tons of crossover as far as technical things as it was shooting and editing, full two-hour editing module that is very, um, very similar to what it would take to uh, edit creatively for Instagram reels, just changing the dimensions versus <laughs> going this way and just doing this instead. Instead of um, 1920 by 1080, you're going 1080 by 1920. Um, and I cover that in sequencing and sizes and all that in the editing section. Um, but even just serving your clients, whoever you're making the content for on Instagram Reels, all that stuff is applicable. Invoicing will be, you know, it'll be all covered in HoneyBook and client experience and all that good stuff. So tons of overlap. Your call on whether you want to make that investment or not. But even just um, getting that diversification of what it could look like to shoot a multitude of different things is uh, really beneficial as well. Um you know, because you might want to shoot some weddings eventually or portraits or uh, any of that. Your sound of your voice is amazing for understanding. Keep up the good work. You're amazing. Thank you so much, Jonas. Um, Medina, discovering your YouTube channel is the best thing. And I'm so happy I did because you're awesome. Thank you so much, Medina. That's so sweet. Um, <laughs> ben, my back was itchy. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Ben Hawes, I run a photo booth business. Yeah, amazing other side hustle to run alongside your wedding photography business. Um is the course relevant to your business? Is there anything you'd say specifically to photo booth owners? Um, yeah, I think there's crossover in tons of this stuff. I do not want to pressure anybody who's not doing specifically wedding photography or specifically wedding filmmaking. Um, there's tons of crossover with the technical sides of running your business, client experience, and the technical parts of shooting. There's not as much a necessity for that in a photo booth because you're in a controlled setting. So that might not be as um, necessary, but serving your clients is just the same. Like, you could wow your clients with so much in a photo booth because you could go above and beyond just having the printing there on site. You could have the printing there on site, but then you could you could even go above and beyond and like make a photo book for them and send it to them for free. But then you could also have pick time set up, which I talked to uh, 
talk about in depth in the print sales module in number five in the classroom, you could take that gallery of digital images and make a, a gallery on pick time and then sell prints um, and do a whole side hustle with a photo booth that just could be incredible passive income for you um, with automations through pick time that send them emails and send them reminders on holidays and all sorts of crazy stuff that could just be making you more money um, than your photo booth already makes. That's in there. Your call. Um, just want to let everybody know it's closing in an hour and a half. <laughs> so enrollment's only open an hour and a half. I'm shouting out everybody that's enrolling. We already have like over, I think, 20 people who have enrolled since the start of this live stream. So epic. Um, so much fun shouting out your names and just celebrating with you. Um, cool. Viper Trap, bro, I'm buying it. Risk it for the biscuit. Boom. Let's go. Oh, that's so exciting. I, it's just so fun to see people make the decision and like being on here. Oh, Ellie and Tyler. What was the favorite wedding video you ever shot? <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know if other clients are watching, but I love, I love Tyler and Ellie. They're, if you ever saw, okay, let me shout them out, please. Had your coffee this morning. Okay. Tyler and Ellie, if you've ever seen my Yosemite film, you've seen uh, the epicness that we did that whole week. I shot over three days. It was one of my breakout films. I talk about it extensively in this course about how it was such a pivotal part of my career shooting Tyler and Ellie's wedding in Yosemite. They just started, they just started a coffee company called Bloom Time Coffee. Can you link it in the chat, Stephen? Um, we've already gotten two bags from them and it's freaking awesome. Bloom Time Coffee. I don't know, link their Instagram. Um, Instagram.com. <laughs> Instagram.com. Uh, Bloom Time. Spell just how it sounds. Bloomtime.coffee. Go check them out. Go order a bag or get on their subscription. A better bang for your buck if you're a coffee lover. Um, already had two bags. Ty, Ellie, you guys are killing it. It's awesome. I can't wait to drink more of your coffee. I can't wait to keep supporting you guys. And I can't wait to shout you out a whole bunch more like this because I love you guys. And this is the kind of relationship building I'm talking about. This is what I'm freaking talking about. Um, I literally went over to their house to watch their film um, the, for the first time. And it was awesome. Was it not, Tyler? It was the freaking bomb. I filmed their reactions. <laughs> and I even made a YouTube video where I interviewed them about the experience of having me as their filmmaker. I just love relationships like that. Um, I love you guys. So pumped for baby. Uh, baby coming. Another baby coming. Um, and yeah, hope you guys are doing well. Um, back to questions on YouTube. Oh, Sam says, my dude, what's good? What is up, Sam? My fellow filmmaker, marathon runner, two-day workshop attender. He has learned from me and he is my pal now. Freaking love you, Sam. Um, love what we're doing, helping people. Love you, dude. Thank you so much for the support. Um, Austin, thanks you too, Deb, for all of this info. Hopping off. Oh, you're gone now, I'm sure. Um, thank you, Austin. Good luck, everyone. Keep going. I have to mention as well, if you enroll tonight, if you've already enrolled, anybody that's enrolled in the classroom has a chance to win it for free. We are going to pick a name tomorrow for everybody that's enrolled up to this point, and we're going to give away the bundle to one person. So if you purchase it, we will refund you that purchase if you win that giveaway. We're going to give that to one lucky person. Um, Sam says, y'all get in the classroom. Oh, oh, let's go. Let's go. Another enrollment, another enrollment. Here we go. Aaron Bilberg photo. What's up, Aaron? Thank you so much for jumping in and enrolling in the classroom. So sick to shout out your names. And it's just, it gets more fun every single time. Um, thank you for investing yourself, Aaron. I'm so stoked for you. Take your business to the next level. Get it going. I hope it inspires you to think creatively and to take those next steps in making more money for yourself and making a business that's sustainable for yourself. Sam said, y'all get on the classroom now, right now. I literally doubled my wedding prices after I spent one afternoon shooting with Eric. Double. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and that was just from the advice he gave me in four seconds between wedding happenings. Imagine 20 plus hours of advice like that. Y'all need this in your life. I love you, Sam. Thank you so much for saying another one. Freaking. Oh my goodness. Andrew Golovin bundle bundle. Let's freaking go. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. 
Jeez. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew got the bundle. He got photo and video. Um, so getting the 25 to 50% off, however you want to figure that out in your head, it is a discount if you package those together in the classroom, the photo and the video bundle. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for investing in yourself. Thank you for trusting me with the education and taking your business to the next level and doing that and taking that jump. I know it can feel nerve wracking, but I just hope you get so much out of it. I hope you get so much out of the Facebook group. I hope you, yeah, I hope you just freaking thrive. I hope everybody that's doing this thrives um, and, and gets so much out of it. We just, we poured our heart into it and it's just so encouraging to see you guys jump in and want to invest in it. And it, yeah, just thank you so much. Corey said, Corey said, thanks for answering. You're welcome. I'll be in your neck of the woods at the end of the month. Sick. Shoot me a DM. Let me know when you're here. Haven't talked on DMs. <laughs> Might in the future though. Okay. Okay, cool. DM me. Let me know. Um, and we can chat. Uh, Cromer Media says, going to crush the marathon. Thank you. Just said I don't have the money to invest in the video course. It's all good. All good. Excited for all the value that um, is in this though for those who are able to invest. What an amazing attitude. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yo, some Jonathan who's already in the classroom. Yo, jump off the fence. <laughs> I feel like I need to make more marketing videos where it's just like me yelling, jump off the fence. <laughs> like invest in yourself, jump off the fence. Advice for when it comes to writing a contract. I go through it fully in the free module, free module of uh, of the classroom. So link in the description. You don't even have to purchase the classroom, the free two hour module of client experience module number seven. I go line by line through my contract and you can, you're more than welcome to rip lines off of that. I did not consult a lawyer doing that. I just consulted off of people's contracts who have consulted with lawyers and I've literally never had an issue with that contract. Um, so if you'd like to model yours off of that, that is available to you. Go check out module seven. Nick Regan just enrolled. I remember saying your name. Let's freaking go. Um, thanks for the content, says Kip. Inspired me, my entire channel, and now my wedding business here in New York. So freaking awesome. Um, appreciate the support, Kip. Thank you so much um, for following along and for supporting. Um, Juan, by the way, are the people that invest on the course able to ask you questions privately? Yes, in the Facebook group. Make sure once you're enrolled, you are enrolled now, Juan. Watch that first video and follow the link to the Facebook group. We'll all be answering each other's questions in there. Um, and we'll be doing you know, different events and virtual events and small mentoring and answering questions and all that good stuff. And shoot me a DM on Instagram and let me know that you enrolled so that I can give you priority in those DMs as well. And it's really easy on Instagram because I can just send you a video message, which is really fast instead of having to type answers. Um, Ethan, what's the mo imp most important asset you try to keep in mind during a wedding day? Service. Show up for your client. Fight for moments that are important and stick to your philosophy. Two weekends ago, it was kind of chaotic at the wedding I was shooting. And there was this moment because time frame was crazy. And I was advocating for her and saying, hey, no, please let them have their, this is so important. And then when she had her first look with her dad after that, it was insanely emotional and so beautiful. And she sat down after that and I came up to her and I'm just like, hey, I just want to let you know, I'm fighting for these moments for you with how chaotic everything is right now. I don't want anybody to take away from what you're experiencing. And I first and foremost want this experience for you. Um, so that's what I'm always thinking. How can I make sure that my clients enjoy their day and have an experience that will leave a lasting impact so that they don't feel stressed and that I can help them enjoy all the moments while capturing them as well? Um, sick, sick, sick. Um, Kate says, canceling the enrollment during this session, but just want to say thanks for being a major inspiration and me finally taking the jump into full-time wedding photography. True, homie. Thank you so much, Kate. That's so freaking encouraging. I honestly love hearing people being like, I can't invest in it now. I'm making this wise decision for myself because I just, you know, like if that's where you're at, that's amazing. And I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can get this open again um, next year in a, in a relatively timely manner. Um, so, that, uh, you know, maybe you can save up for this time frame and be able to invest in it then. Um, and by that time, you'll hear all the different, um, all the different reviews of people who have been on it for months, you know, and, 
like I can't guarantee that it's going to cost the same amount, but if that saving keeps happening over those months, I hope that it's a possibility then. And hopefully we can still do the interest-free financing um, for six months on that as well. <laughs> Jump off the fence merch coming soon. <laughs> That's my new phrase. Uh, really, really enjoying this from Ben. Awesome. What are my top two tips for increasing our number of photography bookings? I've been saying it like crazy this live stream. Relationships. Build relationships with people in the industry. Build relationships with, um, with planners, with any other industry people, any other um, vendors. And just keep building those relationships because those people will refer you to more clients. Those people will advocate for you. Those people will want to do creative things with you and they will lead to more bookings. Um, and then secondly, shoot. Find ways to get stuff in your portfolio, whether that's just like grabbing friends and bringing them out to the lake, doing the you know an evening session at golden hour with them. Do a mock engagement session. Do a mock wedding portrait session. Get stuff on your Instagram and prove the work that you can do and then start charging for it. It doesn't have to be a stuff in your portfolio, make it happen, shoot for free, shoot um, some photos, and then start building those relationships. Go to me, reach out to people, bring value to them. What can you do to help their business? Sick, sick, sick. I'm almost caught up. Oh my gosh. Okay. Jonathan said, American team will be logging off soon. Cheers. Oh man. Thank you so much for the support, Jonathan. I know you enrolled for the classroom. So thankful for all your comments on this live stream. I hope you have a great night. Um, Parth Patel also said, is there some sort of trial or money back period in case the course doesn't fit what we're looking for? We do have an entire free module. This is how we negotiated that in this course. I am giving two hours of the 14 plus hours away for free. Um, so that's how you can figure out if this course is worthwhile for you based on content alone, based on the quality of that content, how well produced it is, and looking at the website and seeing what all those other modules to, to, to expect that kind of um, that kind of quality in all the other modules as well. So that's what we have to offer for you there. Uh, Kip said, Kip again, the reason I like your content is because you're a teacher and so am I. I love that like I'm able to connect with teachers and teachers who are looking to become looking to become filmmakers. It's it's just so freaking cool to see the people um, based on profession, based on what I want uh, for, and then also how they are trying to transition into the creative world as well and seeing that as inspiration from what I've done. I love hearing that and um, it's super cool to hear that reiterated over and over. So yeah, thanks for being here, Kip. Um, Sam, Sam blowing up the chat now. I can blow up the chat. <laughs> I didn't even read that. I can blow up the chat if you want now. Uh, if you if you don't know what to do with yourself when you're caught, what what is the airspeed velocity of an unflamed swallow? <laughs> I hope it's that joke or else this is going to be awkward. That's Monty Python, isn't it? Or is it The Office? I can't remember right now. I don't know. Um, Ben, Ben says another question for you. You're so helpful. <laughs> What's a good way to evaluate if your pricing is right? The market will dictate if your pricing is right. If you book a session and continually book sessions at the prices you're at, you're worth that. But if you book every single one, that's going to dictate, well, you're probably worth more than that because I think an, a healthy place, uh, is maybe every other booking. If you're trying to get in that, like 25 to 30 wedding a year mark. Every other booking should be booking you um, maybe a quarter to half and trying to get them face to face, getting that face to face human interaction with them that makes them feel your philosophy, who you are, and um, what you can do in, in, in serving them. Um, so that's the biggest thing for me is it's really just the market and demand and if you're able to sustain that or not. Ethan, I'll partner with you in crime, Sam. Anna said, what film do I recommend for a beginner? About uh, four rolls deep into my Nikon F2. Sick. I've enjoyed Portrait 400, but I know so little about film. Portrait 400 is a standard gold film stock. It's amazing. If you're willing to invest a little bit more money, I really, and Steven really loves Portrait 800. Super amazing and more versatile with lower light. Um, I personally love the vibey vibes, <laughs> vibey vibes of Sinistil 800T. Super cool, really cool red halation lights. And it has just like this dreamy, it's it's literally uh, 500T, which is, right? It's 500T. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's a film stock like used on Hollywood films when they shoot film. It's just without the remjet layer. So you don't have to like, anyway, if you're developing it, it's not a mess. Um, but it's really expensive. Oh, geez. Another one. Oh, Neftali Garcia buying the bundle. Epic. Neftali, thank you so much for purchasing the classroom. I'm just blown away at your support, you guys, and like wanting to invest in this. It's just, it's hard to handle, honestly, um, just seeing the flood of support tonight and you guys wanting to make this investment. Thank you, Neftali. Thank you for buying the bundle. Um, it's just so validating for me to feel this, that like all the hard work we, all the hard work we put into this, um, just seeing you guys like really, um, really seeing that and wanting to invest in that. It just as cheesy as it is, it like freaking warms my heart that you guys, um, that you guys want to do that. And I'm just so thankful for you, um, wanting to make that investment for yourself. And I just hope it pays in dividends upon dividends for you and makes you so much more money and gives you a sustainable career for yourself so you can support yourself and support your loved ones as well and be able to do what I get to do. Um, which I just love so freaking much. Um, oh, that's so awesome. Um, African or European? I don't know what the context of that is. My heritage? European. <laughs> I would hope that that's pretty obvious. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, it was Monty Python. You nailed it. Um, awesome. Uh, Gino said, I went out, left this YouTube running, had to pick up my kids and wife like a true dad, uh, came back and I'm still here. Thank you, Eric, for all you do. Oh man. Thank you so much, Gino. True inspiration. Thank you so much. My voice is really tired, but I'm like, I want to see this to the end. We're almost an hour out, almost one hour left, which the last email is going to go out in like 10 minutes, which is nuts. Um, for enrollment for the classroom, if you could do me one last thing, if you're watching on YouTube, if you could like this live stream, and get it pushed out to the last late night owls who are here. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, ben says, random question. Do I ever wonder about getting too old to do weddings? It's a great question in the future. I can be physically demand. It can be physically demanding sometimes. Ever think about that and what would be your plan of action? What's so cool is Benj Heish is older than I. He is now, I want to say 37. 36, 36, we'll say 36. And he is like, he's still going strong after 15 years of doing wedding photography. And he's made it sustainable for himself by investing in Leica and getting really small cameras for himself. I totally understand the physical demand. And this is some, this is a constant conversation that wedding photographers and filmmakers have because it's true. It's like, you can't be honestly, like be real with yourself. You can't be a 65 year old and doing this. Um, it's just too physically demanding to do that. And that's just the nature of some jobs. Uh, but what's so great in the classroom and what I love teaching is just, you should be thinking about your five to 10 year plan. If you feel like it's not something sustainable for you in say 10 years, then you should be thinking and building your business in a way that makes it sustainable 10 years from now. And constantly having that conversation with yourself and your spouse, if you have one and all the people, important people in your life, um, to make sure that um, just to make sure that you are taking care of yourself long term. And I get really in depth in that in module 10 and 11, marketing without marketing, with how to diversify your business. So setting something up like YouTube and sponsorships and commercial work. And I'm going to be getting into Airbnb and like diversifying your portfolio and, and your ways of making income can be something that's so sustainable for you. And um, at the same time, like really just trying to make sure you're taking care of yourself physically. Um, yeah, that's a short answer I have for that, but it, yeah, you have to be reckoning with that. You can't, you can't just assume that you'll be able to photograph or, and or film weddings indefinitely because it is very physically taxing thoughts on NFTs and crypto. Um, I'm in crypto. I'm invested in, uh, and I talk about this in the investing module um, in the classroom. I'm invested in Bitcoin. I'm invested in Ethereum. I have some Dogecoin um, and I have a little bit of, um, what's the other one I have? It's not much at all, Litecoin. 
Um, I think it's very compelling. I haven't really dipped my toes in yet, but I think honestly, NFTs on the Ethereum network is an incredibly compelling thing for artists. And I love, honestly love seeing artists thrive and flourish. I think of Joey, the photographer, who's really popular on Twitter is actually local to Chicago. I feel like I need to, I need to meet up with him. He is like, he has openly talked about his drug addiction and depression and mental health and how these past few years have been really difficult for him with, with relapse and with um, getting clean and all that stuff. But he was never able to sustain his career as a photographer. And now he is through um, the NFT scene and um, say, say what you will about it. It is honestly like it's, it's happening and it is a new evolution of the internet and it is a new way to potentially have another form of income. So I'm for sure interested in it. Um, but I would need to do far more research before I dove in because it is a completely different world of information um, that you just would need to be, yeah, need to be, what am I trying to say? <laughs> My brain's melting. Um, you need to be informed on before you just start going after. Um, yeah, or you just try it out and see what happens. That's honestly probably how I'll <laughs> do it. Um Paper Nature. No, that was to the Monty Python reference. <laughs> oh, I've been watching videos for a bit, man. Love what you're doing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, try to pronounce my last name, Jonathan Samaya. 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 I'm usually good at this and I'm not doing well here. Jonathan Samoye. Did I do it? Let me know. Um, Ben already liked it. Thank you. This is so good. Thank you, man. Um, that Matthias kid just got here. Let's get it. Let's get it. Um, here is the, the due diligence of making sure everybody knows we are almost one hour away from the classroom enrollment closing. The link is down in the description. There is a free module for you to see. That's two hours long for a client experience. Um, I go through a full conversation with a potential client. I go through emails and how I've responded to them, uh, real life emails. I go through my entire workflow and HoneyBook, my CRM with my assistant and how we manage inquiries leading to bookings, leading to payment, all that conversion stuff in client experience and conversation. Um, you can go check that out. There is one hour left to purchase the classroom, um, whether it's photo for the photo course or the filmmaking course or the bundle for 50% off. I have to let everyone know that enrollment is over in almost an hour. Um, and that is the only going to be going to be the only time you can enroll for the indefinite future. We just don't know when we are going to open it up again. Um, so yeah. Um, I think I might, I think I might be closing this out at this point. I'm like about to, to melt into the floor. How long have we been going? Almost are you serious? Three hours? Almost. I thought it was going to say two at most. Three hours. I'm so happy. We wanted to do like a, I, we, we did it. We did it, Stephen. This was like a, um, what's it called? A telethon? A telethon. A telethon. Um, someone's like, oh, ben, Ben's still in here. Just eat while you chat. Okay. Perfect. I guess. Yeah. Rally yeah, no. <laughs> okay, hold on. Maybe we get someone else in here. You guys want to see? Okay, do a Chipotle haul. This is so cold now. Disgusting. That's okay. It's not disgusting. I don't mind cold food. Okay. We got carnitas. We got guac. You better believe we got guac. What? Are there inside jokes happening without me? No, this is funny. We got guac. We got guac. Where is this live stream going now? I haven't eaten at all today. This is weird. This is, I never thought I would be doing a mukbang. <laughs> okay. Um, first taste. Incredible. I just got, I got a full, full chip full of guac on that one. And let me tell you, it was lovely. 
That was very lovely. Hey, Steven. Hey, Eric. Do you want to jump in for a little bit? <laughs> Come on. You can do it. Well, we are gaining viewers. Um, I need a stool. You keep eating. All right. Steven is going to... What's funny is, like, I hate listening to the sound of people eating. And so this is my worst nightmare of watching something like this. But I've been live streaming for three hours now. And I haven't eaten anything for dinner. And it's almost 10 o'clock. So, hey, the classroom is over. Enrollment is over in almost an hour. Final email is going to be sent in seven minutes. It's the last chance, you guys. If you're on the fence, jump off of it. That's the new that's the new phrase. I should have been saying it all along. What'd you say? Jump Humpty Dumpty style. Well, don't worry. You jump. We'll put you back together. Hmm. Just like the Put you back together again. Okay. We don't have to talk all about business stuff. Oh, is this turning into live rally caps? <clears throat> hey everyone I can't, I can't do it seriously do it hey everyone welcome back to rally caps a podcast for the creative entrepreneur building a business for the long haul today that's how we every single day i go today today we are talking with hey, <laughs> Oh, this is kind of fun back here. I look like an idiot with my double harness eating Chipotle. This is a Chipotle ad right now. Thank goodness you're wearing your harness, though. Do they have a Do they so have an affiliate program? Um, yeah, for celebrities. Are you serious? Yeah, they actually do. Chipotle does? Yes. Yeah, some celebrities have like a little like card, and they get just free burritos. For Would life. they consider me a celebrity? I don't know, Steve Someone Ells of Chipotle. Someone said all classroom students should meet up at Chipotle. Oh yeah! Wow, yes, that's an amazing idea. Let's see. Um, Let's Chipotle see. hangs. Hey, you can you can ask. Oh, Nick Acosta's here. What's up? Actually, also eating Chipotle. Oh, Epic, nice. dude. I saw your photo on the in the airplane in Iceland today. That was really cool. Were you in Iceland recently? Because that's cool, and I want to go to Iceland. <laughs> I still haven't been there, and I'm a photographer. <laughs> are you though? <laughs> if you haven't been to Iceland, <laughs> are you a photographer? <laughs> Shout out Sam Newton. No, shout out, shout out Chris Chu going to Iceland. I think there's still two spots left. Uh, yes, yeah. Go to Iceland with Chris Chu. He's the best. Yeah. The better question is why do you still have a harness on? Oh, because he's holding two cameras. No, not. No, he's not. I could. I just want to rep Todd yeah. and Clever Supply Co. And yeah. Nice. yeah. Uh, oh my god. Uh, Anna asks a quick question. Hmm. What was your favorite part of the course to make? Ooh. Hmm. Yosemite. Yeah, probably Yosemite. Yeah. Yeah. It I just like really cool. I just sat on a log right in front of El Cap, the like the one of the biggest rock faces on planet Earth. It's pretty unbelievable. Yeah. I think I think you shared one of the stills. I of did. It, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like my second to last or third to last Instagram post, I think. It's it's pretty awesome. I don't think anyone's actually gonna see it on camera. If I I'll show it to Instagram first, which is wildly meta. <laughs> I'm just showing Instagram to, to the Instagram? IG live. <laughs> Do you understand? Wait, is this the metaverse? I, oh is this man. what Mr. I beat Zuckerberg? Mark, Mark Zuckerberg at his own game. <laughs> Take that. See ya, Ethan. Take that, Thank Zuck. You. There you go. Is Ethan leaving? Yeah. Bye, Ethan. We love you, Ethan. Thanks for chatting and being on the live stream. Oh, okay. this is so much easier with you here. It's a, hey, man, is that a wall or a backdrop behind you? This is paper. Paper. Paper backdrop. Paper backdrop. Yeah. It's a great color. Great color. I think it's chestnut. Yeah. Um, ben, Coco. what Coco? Oh, it is Coco. Mm, yes. Coco. Yep. Ben Ramos got it for his team's portraits, and then every time I shoot portraits from him, he just leaves his photo paper behind. I'm like, thanks. That's great. For yeah. Stuff thanks, like Ben. This. You're still watching and editing previews. <laughs> thanks, Ben. I just, I just shot all of the the course content with your paper backdrop. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> the last like week and a half. Mm -hmm. All the all the YouTube videos and the live stuff have been on this paper. It looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. The aesthetics are so rad. <laughs> we have no more questions. I'm just eating Chipotle now. <laughs> ben, ha <laughs> ha Some nice ASMR content. I don't mind it. Can you guys hear me chewing? How miserable is it? 
I'm not joking. You started eating Chipotle at 30 people watching, and now 32 people are watching. So if you keep eating, I think we're just going to keep going up in numbers. People love Chipotle. Which is pretty great. Anna, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you, Anna. Enjoy the classroom. Steven, did you shut out the last order? Uh, no, I'm over here now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get to see Braxton's handwriting. Now. Yes. This is a thick stack of post-it notes. That's crazy. Braxton. 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 M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S -S -I -I. oh, Ivan says to send him some Chipotle. He's about to go back to editing. Man, I wish I could. I wish I, at the drop of a hat, I could send anybody Chipotle as a gift. We're going to answer this question from Ben in a second. Do you meet future clients while shooting other clients' weddings? We're going to shout out this order and then answer that question. Thank you, Brax. We got Dan, Dan Chung. Chung. Photo. photo. Oh, Let's go. Dan, thank you so Dan much. Dan just bought the photo course. Thank you so much for Amazing. investing, Dan. Appreciate you, man. That's so fantastic. It doesn't stop being cool. No, it's unbelievable every time. Isn't that fun to it's sit so, back here? And I like, like it. it a lot. I'm like, ooh, who is it this time? Yeah, it feels really, uh, it feels literally like rally cap. I can't wait to get to know these people on a real level. Yeah, the like, Facebook group is going to be a cool place to I actually, know. like, they're not just going to be names on post-it notes. It's going to uh -huh. be actual Bye, relationships. Anna, Bye. Bye, Anna. Um, awesome. Fantastic. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Ben said, do you meet future clients while shooting other clients' weddings? Yes, 100%. Marketing Always. Marketing without marketing, the whole section, module 10 in in the classroom. I talk about how I met Tyler and Ellie, who I just shouted out, bloom time. She, Ellie was a bridesmaid in that wedding. Yep. And it led to one of the most consequential weddings of my entire career. <laughs> so yes. Yes. Yes, I do meet definitely future clients. At, and that was because... I got video. I got booked for video that wedding because my friend Jasmine was the photographer and she recommended me for video to that couple. It's so natural. It's freaking awesome. It, it makes all the sense in the world. Uh, ben, our friend Ben Ramos asked, which module topic are you most excited for your students to watch? Um, 12. 12. The last one. Yeah. That's the heart behind all my work. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's the most important thing. And I think it has the potential to be the most impactful outside of all the technical things. And it's hard to quantify. I've been saying that all night. It's really hard to quantify that and put a price tag on it and see and communicate its value to people. But it's only going to be valuable retroactively when people experience hearing those stories and hearing the conversations I have with Benj and Josh about philosophy. True. So watch one through 11 first, conclude with 12. Mm -hmm. That's going to really drive everything else home. 100%. Um, Joss Cousteau, I'm from Quebec City, so never had Chipotle. That's a bummer. How did you just say Quebec? Are you really going to, really? Quebec. Quebec? Quebec. Correct him. See, I could have I could have well, just gotten away with that. Jacques Cousteau. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Invites me on this side of the camera so and then puts me on blast. <laughs> ben says this is farking insane. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here, Ben. Uh, Ivan, also Steven, we don't know each other, but I'm such a big fan and your hat is dope. And that is all for now, brother. Oh, Ivan, thank you very much. That's Shout so sweet. Hat. Yeah. Published press, Colin and Samir, the coolest people mm -hmm. doing the coolest right. things. Sponsor what? Sponsored by, Sponsored Sponsored by Jelly Smack. <laughs> jelly Splat. Did you say Jelly Splat? Is it Jelly Splat? <laughs> no, Jelly, jelly Smack. smack. <laughs> <laughs> Quebec. All right, welcome back to the Rally Caps live stream. Just kidding. No, that's what this is now. How hor how horrified would you be if I just walked away and you? Oh, I'd be so wow. down. Let's do really? That. No. In French, Stay here. <laughs> no. In French, you pronounce the U, but in English, it it's said like Quebec. She. Okay, I was saying it to be authentic. Mm -hmm. Quebec. Ah. Uh -huh. And I was saying it because I didn't like know any a, better. Like an American. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't know any I'm better. I'm just trying to be Thank cultured, you. okay? <laughs> oh, wait. That Matthias kid. Uh, do you watch sports often? You're a funny guy. You don't? I do no. sometimes. I watch. I sometimes watch baseball. I'd like to start watching more basketball. NBA's where it's at. NBA's yeah, the where Bulls it's are at. good again. So Bulls that's are cool. killing it this year. They won again tonight. Yeah, it's it's. Are they six and one now. 
Five and one. Six and one. Yeah. Let's go! Wow. They like killed them, right? Yeah. Wow. Rex, you just said music. You said jazz? Mm-mm. Mm. Oh, you Utah Jazz. Utah Jazz. Mm. It's a really dumb basketball name. It's a it's a sorry, they it's a hot take. The jazz were in New Orleans. There we go. Okay. okay. Oh yeah, I didn't realize that. That makes way more sense. Yeah, and then they transplanted to Utah. Utah. <laughs> Very, not not New Orleans. <laughs> Very not. <laughs> Here, oh, Ben's got a. Oh, wait, no, wait, 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 hang on. Um, okay, so we did the there. Michelle, Michelle! just jumped off the fence. Yeah, LOL, we, yeah, we and name. purchased yes, the bundle. Michelle. Michelle, thank you so much. Uh, ben asks a really tactical question: How do you communicate to the client how much time you are willing to give for their event? If they extend their wedding by two hours, do you stay? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. And I make it clear that I invoice for that extra coverage. Mm -hmm. And I, in that moment, I say, I make sure as well. Like, oh, yeah, I, I can invoice you after. Yep. I'm more than fine staying like an extra half hour if I need to. Mm -hmm. I'm totally willing to go above and beyond to serve my clients like that. And anytime I've had to stay extra, every single one of my clients are like, that's totally cool. Go ahead and invoice us, which is fine. Mm -hmm. I even say in the meeting, I'm like, you can change your hourly coverage at any point leading up to the day. You could even change it on the day. I have the whole day blocked out. We're good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Another part of serving your clients well. Not mm -hmm. trying to do too many things in one day, mm -hmm. especially on a wedding day. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Let's see. Christine asks, is marketing yourself as second shooting exclusively with film profitable or appealing to photographers right Ooh. now? Would love to do that more. That's That's very cool. That's a straight up lean into what makes you different. Yeah. Idea. Yeah. Because I would be into that. Mm -hmm. I would love to consider that. And I could even upcharge for a service like that. I've even said that. I said, if I shoot film and you really wanted film, oh, my Instagram just died. <gasps> Instagram oh, well. died? It's okay. There was like five people on the live over there. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I've even pitched it recently where I'm like, if you want film photography, I might e I might just bring someone to shoot film exclusively the entire time. Has anyone pitched you that? No. All right. All right Christine. Christine, you're on to something. <laughs> I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, there we go. Love you guys. LOL. That's the human side most people now lack. Yes, me pronouncing things wrong. That's just me. Mm -hmm. That's me being me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to Except that's <laughs> like, I don't always do that, though. That's the thing. What? I got I got Thomas's name right. I was very good about that. Mm. Yeah. He's from Boston. 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 Pack pack the car and have it yard, Stephen. Let's see, Jonathan, Miami Heat all day, baby. Let's go. Mm -mm. We're going all the way this year. Wow. Wait, you're a Miami Heat fan? Interesting. I'm a diehard Boston fan. Oh, okay. Braxton is Chicago? a diehard D Wade fan. I get no, it. I get it. I love Jimmy. Butler. Jimmy Butler is the best. Jimmy Buffett is the best. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> this is baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, Sam is peacing out. Thank you so much for being here. Bye, Sam. Sam. And, love you. Uh, also, yes, yeah, Sam. We absolutely need to finally meet. In Sam, real life. please come to New York with us. There's still room in the Airbnb. You can come hang out for the marathon weekend. Oh wait, yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see you next week. He said he couldn't, but or this week. Just, just do it. Okay. Let's see. Uh, one, bro, I'm so excited for joining. And honestly, I'm really excited for the content, but even more for the community that is going to be built by Let's it. Go. As you said, oh. contacts and relationships are everything in this business. Has hashtag jump, jump off, off the, the fence. fence. I love you need to like put it, yeah. That's put it in so the chat. Funny. Hashtag jump off the fence. That is so funny. I'm glad I didn't say something like jump off the building. <laughs> Jump off the fence is, yeah. is way more mild than yeah. the danger. Because <laughs> there's like, it feels a Jump little off aggressive. The step stool. It feels a little aggressive. And yeah. I'm like, the fence is, you're not going to like really get hurt if you jump off the yeah. fence. I think a lot of the people this week have kind of put that phrase into it though. Because everyone that's asked about it has said like, all right, I'm on the fence about this course. Right. I think it's just come up naturally and now it's really Right. Where I'm just like, okay, well, jump off the fence. Yeah. Right? Either way, jump off the fence. Just get here. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, Ben, I really appreciate your time tonight. I can't invest in the classroom now, but this has really helped me get to know you better. And I'll definitely search through your free videos and find more tips. So good. Thanks for being here, Ben. And thanks for being honest, Ben. Hashtag jump off. <laughs> Jonathan, <laughs> dang, I love you guys. Love you too. Appreciate you, Jonathan. Thanks for being here. Did I say your name right? You didn't tell me. He said you got it right in the first try, whatever that first attempt was. Samoya. Samoya.
I don't know what the first one was. I'm not going to say it either way, so I'll see if I'm no. right again. Whatever, whatever, we'll just remember you saying it Samoya. correctly. Maybe he'll confirm before he leaves. Write, it out, write it out phonetically for me. I have a question for you guys while we wait. Yeah, Braxton. What Braxton, been, what's your question? What has been the hardest part of navigating not only a professional relationship, but also a personal relationship while having several business interests together, including this classroom? And the podcast. Oh my gosh. Are you talking about me and Eric specifically yes. or, okay, us. Oh, great. Can you repeat that so <laughs> I can repeat question. it to the actual microphone? <laughs> what's, huh. what, what's been, huh. what, yeah, come here. Or yeah, you can just, yeah, yeah. How have y'all navigated y'all's personal relationship mm -hmm. and professional relationship as y'all had several business ventures together, including this classroom and the podcast? Correct. How have y'all navigated that okay. and continue to be friends through all of that? Okay. <clears throat> How have we done that? It hasn't been good so far. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think? No. I mean, like, of course it's fine. It's good. But I want to, like, spend more friend time with you than yeah. just business. Oh, you're saying the balance. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, sheesh. All right. I guess I'm heading out. <laughs> it hasn't been good. <laughs> um, the balance has been very tough. Lately, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's been it's been crazy. Yeah, but the other day you were like, "Can we just can we just like, go get coffee like as friends?" Yeah. He's like, "Hey, can we go get coffee and talk?" And I was like, "You're not breaking up with me, are you?" <laughs> I was like, "No, the opposite. I miss just hanging out with you mm -hmm. because life has been very intense lately." And then Mike thought the same thing, and then it just ended up being a group hangout. But yeah, yeah, true. It was still good. Yeah, it's great. I'm going to bro date soon. Yeah. We had we got to have actually a lot of quality time at this wedding that we shot together this past weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had like a full hour break in the middle of the day, and I like shared my whole in law side, yeah. Sabria's family, and yeah. every dynamic about it. Yep, and, and my, your family, my too, family and history. And yeah, yep. Thanks for listening to me for so long. I great. wanted at the end of that to just be like, dude, I'm just like giving you a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of information, but it was good too because it felt like it was just time to not talk about work for the first time in like a couple months hmm. it was it was it's been a really really busy time of the year yeah. not even just because of the course but because of yeah producing rally caps episodes in the midst of that and also peak wedding season for us i mean it's family life and i we just moved here you just had your fourth kid and like it was it's just been a very very crazy season yeah very crazy yeah, very yeah. excited to rest and like chill for a little yes. while and all that good stuff. Yes. Um, so we're going to swing the scales back. Yeah. It's uh, <clears throat> to just Help. hanging out. <laughs> yes, seriously. Yeah. Um, Joshua, want to give him a shout out? Oh, he's in the classroom. Yes. Yeah. I, I DM'd, I Instagram video chatted with him earlier today. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And this is kind of making me sad that he just said this. <laughs> He said it was my fault in the first place that he purchased a Leica M3. Okay. We just said he just sold that so that he could purchase the, the classroom. And that is the greatest honor of my life. No, he said if. He I said if. It. Oh. He said if I have to sell my Leica M3. <laughs> jo Josh, could you do Eric the honor of selling your Leica? No. No, I think Josh already purchased. He did. Yeah. He did. He said, uh, yeah. No, do your best to keep the, uh, the M3. Yeah. Worst case scenario, I buy it. <laughs> worst, yeah, worst case scenario, Braxton said he will buy it from you. So just DM Braxton at Braxton Wallace. Okay. Excellent. Um, honestly, super stoked just thinking about that Facebook group. Yep. It's going to be incredible. Okay. Samayoa. 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 I, I, it is what I said. Dang it. Um, what do I wish to d did differently when you were getting started with photography biz? Um... I said this earlier, it was learning more technical things, mm -hmm. like getting things right in camera, especially on the video side. Yes. I think I would have done more of the actual business principles first. Yeah. Or just or just earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I was just really gung ho about CRM. Yes. Yeah. Just like forming digital business. contracts. Yeah. There's so many things on the business front that often go overlooked because you're just so enthusiastic about doing something you love for a living. Yep. So that, you that get too side. creative into it creatively. Totally. And hype instead of like building a sustainable business. Uh, 
I'll be hopping off. Have a great last 50 minutes, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, man. Appreciate you. Part, you said the site declined both of your cards. I don't know what's happening. I think every hmm. other transaction's worked, but it, um, you could maybe use PayPal. You can use PayPal. PayPal might help. Mm -hmm. um, Mark Patel, that's not... You're, you're not Kim and are you? No, I don't believe so. <laughs> um, if you had to pick YouTube or photography at the beginning of your business journey, which one over the other and why? Ooh, hmm. I think I would still do it the same way. Photography first and then YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Because if I didn't have the skills to make beautiful content that sounded good and was creative, then yeah. I don't think it would be as compelling. I don't know what I would talk about. <laughs> I was going to say, even the material itself is like very valuable right. photo, video insight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 11, 11. I'm staying to the end. I'm like, I don't know if I'm staying to the end. <laughs> you might stay uh, to an empty live stream if that's the case. <laughs> I do have to go to the bathroom. So can you like hold on? The Absolutely. You sure? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Steven. All right, everyone. It's your time to shine. Hey. 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 Hey, talk about the classroom. Hello. Oh, I have to? Yeah, give some insight about your perspective. No, legitimately. Okay. Like, what was it like for you to be a part of this? What was your What was your role in mm -hmm. this? Maybe talk a little bit more about the team. Sure. And yeah, just like what, what this opens up for us and possibilities for our own careers. And, you know, now we're thinking about potentially building courses for other people. Lots of things. Yeah. 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 Uh, cool. So, hey, everyone. Braxton, do you want to join me for this Hi, part? Everybody. Come here, man. Let's do this together. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, that's Eric's phone. Sorry. So, uh, so Braxton and I were on the team that yes, made we the uh, the classroom, which all of you are enjoying right now. Thank you for being a part of it. Um, we so uh, Braxton's role in this is definitely easier to define. If so you wanted to say I that. edited the entire course, start to finish. My hands were on every single module. Um, obviously, Eric came back in, put his fingers on everything you know just making sure everything's perfect because we put so much time into this course and you know just making sure it's absolutely perfect from you know colors to how it sounds to cuts everything um now stevens is a little bit more convoluted you did most of the, i would say you probably just did a lot of the branding i did a lot of the i did the widest variety of things yes. um i built out the script decks that basically structured oh, I each you did that too yeah yeah I, I did a lot of writing for the course itself all the script decks were built out um a, a little bit more in advance for each of the modules so everything that eric was going off of all the slide decks that you actually see in the course um a lot of that language there eric and i worked on together i helped kind of create rough drafts and we, we really honed in all that language there uh, I then did a lot of the, all of the branding and design of the course, uh, naming it, building out a logo, kind of giving um, a personality to it. Uh, and then I helped uh, design the website and build all that out as well and just kind of create a good like user uh, experience on there. Um, and then, you know, just kind of like pitched in and helped out in as many other places as possible with, with a tight, small team like this, it really kind of leans on everyone to yeah. be able to like share the load. I feel like everyone had their specific role, but mm -hmm. it still kind of leaked into other people as well. Like yeah. We all kind of did a lot of things. Totally. Yeah. It's, it's really is a team effort. And that's one of the benefits about working on a team of really tight knit friends is that, yeah, it, there's a different dynamic that you have to learn how to work with. And there's like, there, there's a whole element of like just, knowing how to communicate well and being open and honest with each other in all of your communication. Um, but like if you are working with friends versus a team of, of strangers or people that you're maybe not as familiar with, uh, it's really nice to know like one another on a personal level because then you can know kind of how everyone's strengths and weaknesses, like where they yeah. lie. Um, you know, you can just kind of have a sense of like when people are maybe a little more stressed out, you can pull them aside. You can, you know, take a break. You can go on a walk together, go get coffee, kind of like clear the air on whatever it is that might be stressing them out. Uh, it, it, it's just really helpful in like maintaining a really healthy work environment and like just being able to be there for one another. Um, and that also kind of comes with sharing the load and like being able to, um, you know, if someone is faltering, being able to like step in right next to them and, and continue on forward and just like making sure that you're meeting whatever that deadline is. So, um, yeah. And it's definitely been a process as well. Like it definitely like 
we learned a lot doing this. Like, we did. You know, because like we went as going into it. I don't think we were that good at communication. Mm -hmm. I don't think we were as good as like leaving that line of communication open, being like, hey, I'm doing too much already. Mm -hmm. And like, I can't take on anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's it's definitely been a labor of love. I'll say that. Totally. I, I think I, speaking for all four of us, Mike included. So Mike, Eric, uh, Braxton, and I, this is definitely the largest thing that any of us have worked on before yes. uh, to the largest scale that we've produced anything. Um, it, you know, it's, you know, 23 plus hours of content between both Jeez, things yeah. and like the, you know, everything from the uh, uh, scripting and ideating of that to actually executing it and producing it and marketing it and designing it and uh, actually getting it out in the world is, is a huge undertaking. Yep. Um, so naturally there are plenty of points along the way where we, you know, faltered and we learned and made mistakes and, and got better from that. So yep. Uh, I, you know, it was, it was definitely a tough process, but one that I think all of us grew immensely from, and we're all better for ourselves as individuals okay. and better friends and better business owners on yep. our own too. Yep. Final cut or premiere pro. Um, so the common misconception with like, I'm going to speak to this a little Go bit. Go for it. Um, the misconception with a lot of editing softwares is that you're limited based on which software you're using, which is not true. You can edit a full length feature film on Final Cut, Premiere Pro, DaVinci iMovie. Resolve, <laughs> iMovie. You legitimately can. <laughs> you, if you know you what can. you're doing, yeah. you can use any editing software. Um, but when you start getting into the actual intricacies of video editing and starting to take it really serious, um choosing the right software for what you're editing um makes your life so much easier so i as an editor i very much recommend final cut for people who are one on mac because it's mac only and it's very optimized for mac so it runs really well you don't have nearly like the crash issues that you have with premiere and things like that um per final cut specifically though is really good for making short quick cuts and making short form content that you need to put out really, really fast. That's why people like Jesse Driftwood and Daniel Schiffer, they both use Final Cut because they can, they produce a lot of content and they can make fast edits like that. They're not very intricate edits, but they're very well done. They're incredible at what they do, but they have to put so much content out at such a high rate that Final Cut and the way the timeline is built and the way the software just is, it's very good for people who are trying to put out short form content out very quickly. That's why like a lot of like your more advanced TikTokers, even them, they use Final Cut. Um, Premiere Pro, um, I have a love-hate relationship with Premiere. I really, really love the interface of Premiere. I love a lot of things that come with Premiere. Um, I currently use DaVinci Resolve to edit all of my own work. When I'm editing for Eric, I still use Premiere Pro. We actually still use the 2019 version of Premiere Pro because Eric is terrified of it crashing. Um, which is a fair fear which is a because very, it crashes all yeah, the time. Which is a very fair fear. Um, but yes, the shortcoming of Premiere is that you do have issues with it crashing. For the longest time, it has not been very compatible with Mac OS. Or my heart. Um, or our hearts. Mm -hmm. Um but I really love the interface. I still prefer the interface and just how everything is. Um, I still like that more than DaVinci. Um, but DaVinci is also a great option too. DaVinci is free, which is really nuts. So I have used both the free version and the studio version extensively. And so far in like my almost a year now of using DaVinci, I have only noticed like two things that, the studio version has over the free version. So that's the, really the biggest intriguing thing with DaVinci is that yeah. they give you so much for it to just be free. Um, but yes, so really go back to the final question, Final Cut or Premiere Pro. It really depends on the content you're trying to make. Premiere is a little bit more geared towards longer form content. Um, and Final Cut is more geared towards, you know, short, quick, high rate content. Yeah. I'm not a video editor uh, by any means, but I am a podcaster, which means I know how to read names and Parth Productions Got the just bundle. bought the bundle of the classroom. So thank you, Parth Productions, for being here. Um, like I was saying, I'm not a video editor by any means, uh, but I personally want to switch to Final Cut 
uh, even more so now because of how efficient these M1 Max are getting. It just seems like it's a match made in heaven. And if it's a similar, like linear style editor mm -hmm. to Premiere, if I get faster export times and render times and everything from Final Cut, I think I want to switch to something. That, like that's that. a good way to describe Final Cut. It's very linear. Mm -hmm. There's there's not a lot of things along the way to get from like import to export. It's very straightforward. Uh, definitely wish you could edit H.264 files with the free version. I'm assuming you're talking about DaVinci. Yeah. Um, I think you can. I I feel like I have. I don't even. I don't use DaVinci. Even if you couldn't. Even in the free version of DaVinci, you can still transcode your footage. So you can still transcode it to ProRes, which edits like butter in DaVinci. Um, ProRes so, edits like butter everywhere. Yes, it does. ProRes is the best. Pro, ProRes is a very good codec. Yes. Um, but so like, even if you can't edit H.264, just transcode it. it. It makes your life so much easier because H.264, H.265, those codecs are a nightmare to edit with. H.265 off of the Canon R5 is a behemoth. It's actually, it's not even a behemoth. Like it's physically uneditable like you just can't edit the footage yeah sorry prores is a behemoth file size yes and it's like butter butter 1080 prores isn't very big it's the 4k like 4k it's, hq yeah, and true. then like prores 4444 that's win like, win 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 <laughs> four 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 yes. four prores can actually like the file sizes are larger than raw <gasps> yes yeah true uh let's see we have another question oh i'm gonna get your name wrong i'm so sorry but oh yes Mishra, Ojas Mishra, uh, can we please have regional pricing whenever you guys make your next class? I'm from India and currently have the converted price from US dollars to, um, I'm going to INR, INR rupees. Uh, and it costs me my entire monthly salary which with a pained uh, emoji next to it. So we'll work on uh, any kind well, of regional that's, pricing. Things like that are stuff that we will definitely be addressing and figuring out what we're going to be doing going forward for the if we decide to drop next time uh mario ram media thank you juan zabala and same to you man the a74 is a beast yeah that digital focus breathing pretty awesome it's pretty sick pretty awesome that 4k crop though kind of sucks kind yeah kind of not awesome so win eh, lose just, just shoot wire um the Matthias kid, how do you make your footage ProRes? So we actually can use the free version of DaVinci Vinci. to transcode uh, footage to ProRes. Um, I, are there any codecs that can't be converted yeah. to? R, R6 can be transcoded. R5 as well. I think it's that new, yeah, okay. I don't know if that's been updated yet. But. Um, in, the, in, the, in the latest updated DaVinci, you still have an old version of DaVinci too. That's that's why I won't read the R6 R5. Files. So the latest version of DaVinci can yes. transcode. DaVinci 17 Great. can read R5 R6 files. So if you actually import it into DaVinci and highlight all your clips, you can go up to File Media Management and it'll actually bring up the Transcode tab. And from there, you can click the drop down menu and click on ProRes, and it'll transcode all of your footage to ProRes. Awesome. That's in module. That's four. in module four. And then you can also do the same thing in Adobe Media Encoder. So if you're in a Premiere Pro workflow, you yep. can actually drop it on a Media Encoder. Mm -hmm. um, same thing. You can mm -hmm. click in the bottom left hand corner. You'll have tons of different already Adobe presets of different codecs and stuff. And you just click on ProRes uh, four two two HQ is what we transcode here at Creative Club. And when I'm editing for Eric, mm -hmm. and um, it'll transcode all your clips to ProRes there. Nice. Uh, Matt Willie says, being a gamer with a monster PC, love that. Uh, I never had to transcode, but definitely will transcode to ProRes yes. to use DaVinci. I just to make sure I'm understanding you, you don't you don't have to work in ProRes files no. to use DaVinci. You do not. Um, we just use DaVinci Resolve in order to transcode to because ProRes. Because I don't know if you're noticing a trend here or not, but Eric likes to use old things. So just like 2019 Premiere Pro, we edit on. I we also edit on 2015 and. 2017 macbooks um so that's why we have to transcode to ProRes. wait but also matt whatever games you play on pc i drop them below yeah please do yeah we i game know. on pc too yeah i game on my nintendo switch <laughs> so that's unrelated Lame. but yeah would love to hear what you play <laughs> uh very cool love that i just want to scroll back real quick make sure we haven't missed anything that people have been dropping in the comment section we're having a great time. Yeah, you're doing great, guys. Schultz and this Wallace? is super fun. Hey, talk about the classroom more. Talk about the classroom more? No, I'm good. <laughs> 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 if you are still here, actually, really quick, just like drop a comment for us. Ask a question. We're happy to talk about the classroom. Do y'all like us more than Eric? <laughs> 
They're, they would never betray their YouTube dad. Come on. What if I give you 20 bucks? Yeah, just DM us later. Just let us know there. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Matt uh, is, is asking a, a question of Eric from behind the camera. Just wanted to, or not a question. Uh, Eric, Matt says, thank you for uh, changing his mindset and wedding filmmaking. It's been a true game changer, life changer. Love you, Matt. He says, I love you. Valorant and Warzone Valorant players. players. Oh, nice. Okay, nice. we can play Warzone together. Valorant that works fun. perfectly. Um, so then what you sorry, do so the film <laughs> really quick is you put it in this and then you shake it around. Walter yeah. White, how did you get here? What? You do four version, four inversions every yeah. 30 seconds. Wait, oh my God, are you wearing a denim apron? I am wearing a denim apron. <laughs> this stuff stains, so. Are you building my phone number? I will be, actually. Denim apron, that's the epitome of the world. Well, it's not here, it's not here. He, why doesn't Bean have a waxed mustache if he's wearing a denim apron? <laughs> um, ben is here. Love that. You said Oksana's here? Oksana Myro Creative. Hey! Love that. Wait, Oksana, she was the one that won, right? Or no? Oh, okay. Is she really? Wait, Oksana, where are you from? Let, let us know. You're from Boston, right, Oksana? You're from Boston? You're That's from amazing. Boston? Where do you pack your car? Uh, who else we got? Ophim DZN. I, I'm gonna pronounce all these things wrong. Uh, yo, uh, Ivan wants Rhode to know Island. where you got your rad shirt from. Who's Braxton? Tell us about the rad shirt. Okay, so um, I am a avid and diehard Harley Davidson fan. I own a Harley Davidson. I own a 1999 uh, Harley Sportster 1200. And so, honestly, 80 percent of my closet is just Harley Davidson. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, You're wearing um, a hoodie from Harley Davidson earlier. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I buy a lot of my Harley stuff either from eBay or thrift stores. You can find a lot of Harley stuff at thrift stores or like dealerships. Actually, I bought this on an app called Depop. It's kind of similar oh, to Grailed. Nice. Yeah. Love Depop. Depop is fantastic. Yeah, I love Depop. Yeah. And then, you know, like supporting recyclable fashion. Yeah. And the Drift stuff more is so things. cheap. Like I bought this shirt for like 10 bucks. That's amazing. I got Chipotle on it a while ago. Oh, so rip. no. But now it's yours. It's personal. Yeah, it's personal. Yeah. And it's it's a little bit. Well, that's fine. It's add, it adds character. Well, know? the other day, you stitched a, a few buttons back onto your blazer right before a wedding. Mm -hmm. So I think you can fix some like yep. rip type yep. things also. Um, whoa, wait. People whoa. are saying things. Look at this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oksana's from Rhode Island. That's sick. <laughs> Love Rhode here. Island. We're over here. I'm oh, just looking at my shirt. We're like, oh, is that a Chipotle <laughs> stain? <laughs> Um, let's see, Joshua. These guys are very wise. <laughs> That's the most generous thing anyone's <laughs> ever said to us. Uh, Ben Hawes, the pandemic killed my photo booth. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. It killed your photo booth business. I tend to actually do more corporate parties versus weddings. Any tips on reviving my business? I'm in New York City. I've been offering a lower price to compete. You want to take this for me? I, I, yeah, you. I think. I think yeah. I think that the photo booth scene is still a very under, it's not a very well-known thing. And it's, I feel mm -hmm. like it's a very underappreciated thing. Yeah. I feel like it's one of those things that couples don't really understand how awesome it is mm -hmm. until they have it. And then they go back and they go get all their little photo strips and they're like, this was so cool. Yep. Cause they like take photos with all of their friends. Yep. Um, I think the biggest thing is just marketing yourself in a way that you're showing yourself your worth you're showing people that like hey um this is not the most flashy thing mm -hmm. um this is not the most um fun thing to pay for at your wedding but once you're actually there at your wedding and you know you're pulling all your friends in y'all having a good time y'all probably a few drinks in and um y'all have all these awesome and rad photos that you can print out for them right there mm -hmm. um very awesome keepsakes so honestly just probably marketing yourself in a way that's just showing your worth also, I think Eric said this earlier, but if you are doing photo booth stuff, do something like purchase pick time or a similar service, like a gallery service, put the photos that are taken at the photo booth into a gallery and then send that to your client. And then they can share that with all the guests at the wedding and they can then in turn buy prints of those photos. That could just be another way to passively make some money after you've already done the legwork of making the photo booth happen at the wedding um let's see let's, let's see, see let's see matt I, willie i remember seeing in one of the videos that eric never utilized social media ads for finding new clients is this still true to this day and do you think it could have accelerated growth yes it's still true to this day yes eric and would you like to take this question yeah this is very you yeah. you focused yeah. 
Um, so I don't, I, for my wedding stuff, I don't do any social media formal marketing. So I don't pay for that. What's funny is we did use social media ads for uh, the classroom, for promoting the classroom, but that's just an entirely different beast because that's a digital asset instead of an actual service, um, which is my wedding photography and filmmaking. Basically, at this point, my whole company on the wedding photo and filmmaking side runs itself without needing to do any formal advertising. Covered um, in module 10. Yeah, in marketing without marketing. Uh, you guys literally have 30 minutes left to enroll. Just want to make sure Dude, everyone knows wild. that. 30 more minutes. 30 minutes left. 30 uh, minutes. Less than 30 minutes. Um, yeah, so I'm not saying it's not a powerful thing. Um, if I were to do it all over again, I think I probably would dabble a bit in Facebook ads or Instagram ads and really like get a course or something that teaches me or watch a ton of YouTube videos that teaches me or would teach me how to target ads and get the right demographic and retarget people based on website visits and that sort of stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks awesome. for joining us, Eric. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. On your oh, show. yeah. Would you like some Chipotle as a parting gift? Uh, I'm fine. Thanks. Okay. We'll just keep that. <laughs> Not business related. Sorry, but I'm second shooting my first wedding this Saturday. What should I prioritize and how can I best help the main photographer? Oh, that's totally business related, yeah. Austin. Yeah. Yeah. That's literally business. Best way to do this and the easiest way to do this is either beforehand or at least at the beginning of the day. You go up to the main photographer and you legitimately say this word for word. What are your expectations of me today? And how can I best help you? Some lead shooters prefer their seconds to be more assistants and, you know, carry bags, swap lenses, make sure they're good, um, taking care of the clients, making sure they have water, things like that. Other lead photographers rely on you to actually shoot more. Um, so it's really just communicating with your lead up front and just legitimately just asking them, what are your expectations of me? And then just willing to do whatever they ask you to. I remember... Um, when I was getting acclimated to the Chicago scene, when I moved here, I second shot for Bean, uh, Aaron Bean, who the guy in the denim apron you just saw. Walter White. Um, and I did everything he told me to. And one time he asked me to go get – so we have these very, very large cases that you'll see in Module 2. If you purchase the course, you'll see our big Pelican cases that we carry our lights in. Braxton um, fits inside of this case. I do. <laughs> um, Bean asked me to go get them out of the car, and I had to carry two of those five blocks – in the rain. And I said yes with a smile as I was dying on the inside. So just be willing to do anything and everything your lead tells you to. And the better experience you give them, the more uh, inclined they are to hire you again. And the more inclined they are to refer you to other people and hopefully even start booking your own lead jobs. Yeah. And whatever expectations they might have, you can always do bulletproof things like bring snacks, bring water, bring backups of things. Uh, if if you're shooting in the same system, especially bring backup rechargeable AA batteries, bring extra camera batteries, bring extra flashes, some lenses that they may not have, or just backups of those things, because you can always be in a place where you can just hand something off to them or uh, just kind of pass off gear and kind of swap those things out in case something fails or batteries die or whatever it is, uh, there's always a way for you to just provide value in that way as well. As a second shooter, your priority for yourself at least is to constantly be putting yourself in a position to where you can solve problems for your lead photographer. Because the more times they have an issue and you solve it like that, the more they're going to love you. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, let's see. Matt asks, just wondering about ads because I'm right on the verge of taking my business full time and I'm mainly relying on referrals. I think that was a, a continued yes. part of... Uh, the question that Eric answered. Uh, let's see. Mario Ram Media says, so I shoot wedding in quinceaneras, but I have opened myself Quinceanera. up. What is with the people in this room correcting me tonight? I have a podcast. <laughs> but I've opened myself up to doing other events, such as sports, portraits, family shoots, etc. Is that bad? Should I focus on my one uh, niche and hone my skill on big events, or should I be a jack of all trades? I would personally recommend honing in on one thing. Um, even from just a general portfolio perspective, it is much, much easier to uh, present a, a unified body of work to someone um, and convince them that you are the right person for the job um, rather than having just a total mishmash of like, 
Free. whatever work it might be just oh, your best yeah. shots within these random yeah. genres um yeah whether that it means just like streamlining your website so that's mm -hmm. only one specific type of work whether that's weddings concerts landscapes families uh portraits whatever that is or also your instagram account very helpful there too to just make sure that whatever they're looking at you are are presenting your work to one very specific type of client because um, you're just going to have a much higher chance of booking them if they see you as the person to go to for that thing that they're trying to hire for. That's my boy. So I actually, I push back on this opinion. But he can't lot. because I'm 10 okay. inches taller than him. Oh, 10 inches. <laughs> <laughs> he got you back. <laughs> What's so funny is one YouTube video that totally changed the trajectory of my channel was make 100k a year as a wedding photographer yes. and the video i made right before that mm -hmm. mike and i disagreed about this very topic oh interesting what did you say i said what you said okay all right so and you're mike about mike. to say what i say yeah okay i say think it. steven's not wrong in what he said i think this large say that again i don't think <laughs> steven is not inherently wrong <laughs> I think the big thing is that it largely depends on where you're at in your career and how young you are. That's if fair. you're still young and starting out, I advise you to put your hand in as many jars as possible and try as many different things and figure out what you actually love within this industry. And once you find out what you really love, then you can niche down. But you, what you don't want to do is back yourself into a niche that you end up don't loving in 10 years and feel like you can't rotate out of that niche. In terms of a business perspective and making money, yes, niching down is your most successful route to making money. But in terms of um, sustainability and long-term fulfillment, I advise you to try a bunch of different things and not worry so much about streamlining your business just yet until you really figure out what you want to do for the rest of your career. I agree with that as well. Agreed. Yeah, for sure. There's what I am. And I'm in the, I'm in the middle <laughs> of your two thoughts. Well, I did, I did that exact thing when I started out as well. Yeah, yeah, same. Right. But when you start making money yes. and doing something that you love, that's right. You listen to Steven. Yes. Yeah. Niche, start niching down yes. on that. Yeah. And if you begin to not like that and it's not sustainable for you, yes. use it for money to then approach new things. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm a beginner wedding filmmaker from Japan. May I ask you what will you bring to wedding if you can go there only by public transport? This happens often oh, in Tokyo. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Uh, I, 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 honestly, I'd start by saying, like, if you can, put as much gear as you can into a backpack so yes. you can just hold on your back as much of that equipment as possible so that you're rolling only maybe one bag uh, instead of having like two large Pelican cases or just like roller bags. Um, try to maybe keep all of your camera equipment in a backpack and then have your things such as light stands, tripods and lights uh, into as compact a lighting kit as you can. Um, and then even trying to use as many like smaller little aperture LED, mm -hmm. like battery powered yep. lights instead of um, like even just larger lights that require V-mount batteries or, you know, extension cords that plug into the wall. Uh, if you can get away with that, try to try to work that into your workflow and just find a way to make that work. Um, but yeah, I think, honestly, I think the backpack is key just so that you can focus on rolling um, or carrying like one other long bag. Yes. Um, lights for reception aren't inherently necessary. Um, if you're trying to make your receptions look incredible, though, they are. Um, unless the venue has lights already. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I definitely advise, like Steven said, to try to pack as light as possible. Um, but at the end of the day, like if you really want to make a bomb wedding film, bring that whole gear closet. Just make it happen. It I mean, I've seen people in New York try flipping <laughs> couches and they'll like take the couch on the subway. Have y'all seen those videos? No. <laughs> they'll like go to garage sales and try to flip couches, <laughs> but they ain't got no car, so they... They take the couch on the subway. You're Mississippi coming out. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all yeah, are weird. Okay. Uh, 28 freaking minutes. Let's go, Ben. Now it's 20. Oh, it's 20. Oksana, 100% yes. All this. What up, Benj? Do you have any questions? What is Do you your, need to be taught anything? Yeah, what, you, ben? what is um, your current lighting setup? So for here, we have the 
Aperture 300X. Um, but won't you tell them what we bring to receptions? Ooh, yeah, I love what we bring to receptions. <laughs> I'm going to get back to you in a second once our automated gimbal <laughs> <laughs> rotates back to us. Um, so for reception lighting, uh, we have a number of different things. We actually did bring the 300X to a wedding that uh, we all shot together two weeks ago. Uh, and that was awesome to have something like that there. Uh, but we also use Walter White. Why don't you come join us in frame here? Oh, wow. um, oh, come wow. on in, man. I, I, heard, yeah. I heard you talking. These are the uh, the little bulbs that Eric was talking about earlier. These are the Lowell Pro. I don't even know what they're called. They don't, it's, have, a name. They don't have a name. Lowell Pro lights. They, yes. they do not make these anymore. Correct. So uh, I recently just purchased about five of them <laughs> off of eBay. They're cheap on eBay. They're 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 under ninety dollars each, and the bulbs are about eight bucks. Um, I have five of them. I usually bring four of them to weddings. Uh, what I do is I uh, backlight the couple, I backlight and fill light the speaker, and then I will also have an, uh, a, like another one simply just to like aim at whatever I need to yep. in that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there'll be another, the, the, like the speaker spot will be different than the dancing spot. So like I'll have some lights pointed in different directions to make them work in any scenario. Yeah. Um, but they're yeah. incredible. They're, uh, they do bother people. That's one thing I will say. If you do get these, yeah. what I typically do is I will go up to the guests that I know this is going to be like blinding them. And I say, hi, just so you know, those are my lights that are up. Uh, if, if they bother you, I'm, I apologize, but they will only be on for the dances and the speeches. Mm -hmm. and they go, oh, you know what? No problem whatsoever. Yep. Um, so I'd say just get ahead of things, um, especially when you're bringing your own lighting. Just make sure you address some people uh, because I do have grandma. I had the parents of the bride and groom one time come up and be like, can you turn those off? And I'm just like, uh, I will in a bit. Um, but reception lighting, uh, they're great. They get hot. Be careful. Yes, yes they, get you, very very they get very hot. Very, very hot. You could crack an egg on them and make breakfast yes, they're very they're hot burning um and then also they're fragile um if you bump them i mean just like about that hard the light bulb <laughs> like will just go now. just that yeah yeah seriously <laughs> well there's one of these that's pretty messed up but oh, great it's fine but uh, i've done it multiple times the other day i was lifting this up and i didn't see that there was a platform above me <laughs> and it hit it and it just went off and yeah. i was like no yep. so yep they're great these are fantastic for filmmakers, but I actually also like them as a primarily a photographer myself. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think they combine really well with a uh, bounce flash and using these as a hair light. Yes. Uh, it looks beautiful. It's outstanding. It looks so good. They flare really nicely too yep. in lenses, yep. like fantastic lights. Mm -hmm. Ben Chai, how are you still streaming? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, d I don't know. We don't know. We didn't expect to go this long. No. <laughs> but here we are. Here we are. Hi, Braxton and Steven. Eric just stumbled. Eric just. Eric, comma. Just stumbled across your channel and really wish I could invest in the classroom right now. Do you ever do in person mentorships only two hours from Chicago? Nice. Uh, do you ever do in person mentorships, Eric? Um, not not, not at this time. Back in the day, he used to. Yes. But that was a time before the classroom. It was a time before the classroom. Uh, let's see. Hey, Eric, been watching your videos for a while now. Awesome style to your shots. I'm not a wedding or portrait shooter, but still learn a lot from your style. Cheers. That's because he hires me as his second shooter. <laughs> Thank you. Benj, teach me all of the things always. <laughs> oh, yes, because I definitely can, because I'm definitely the most successful wedding photographer ever. Unlike someone I know named Benj Heisch. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> You just called out Ben Spice in the live stream. Yeah, wait, I, I didn't follow that. <laughs> no, I was, it was like reverse of like. Oh, yeah, it was ben, a compliment. Because like Benj is like one of yeah. the most successful wedding photographers ever. Benj is the goat. Benj is the goat. Eric it's told me. <laughs> oh, yeah, Benj is in yes, module is. 12 of the classroom. That's true. On the photo side. Eric told me to DM him with my question. Should I do it now or tomorrow? Do it right now, do Juan. It right now. Don't hesitate. Don't even think. Don't hesitate. He's, yeah, he's going to answer tomorrow, but you can DM him right now. Or you can DM him tomorrow. No, I he I you, now. I yeah <laughs> yeah. You message him and he'll do it like that. This is like playing a game of telephone right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Mario says thank you. You guys are the best. I appreciate your input and wisdom. Thumbs up. Thanks, What's Mario. What's the brand on that? Brand on what? Or is the, it light, like the light? I think uh, Lowell Lowe Pro. L O W E L L. One one L on either end. Yeah, just take one L, not two Ls. 
Uh, nice. <laughs> uh, David asks, hey guys, thank you for doing this. Last year I started to do video alongside photo at weddings. Just wondering, what is a good average time to spend on video edits? Oh, that's mm. tough. I feel like it, I'm not a wedding filmmaker it, myself, but I, I imagine it ranges from film to film and how long you've been doing it and how you dial in your workflow. It work definitely well. ranges film to film. It definitely ranges on, you know, what you signed for, obviously how you, what you signed your contract for, what the length of the film is, how like intricate the wedding day was. Um, and it honestly it really depends on how, um, how much effort you want to put into the film. I'm definitely not going to be the person to tell you that the more hours you put in the film, the better it's going to be because I know people who can pump out amazing wedding films in a few days. And then I know people who make it a labor of love and, you know, make it over the course of three months. Um, so honestly, it largely, it depends on your skill level as well as an editor and coming into, uh, the edit with what, how you want the wedding film to be, what the story arc is going to be, how you're going to format it and things like that. Um, average, like I deliver my wedding films within two to four months. Um, Eric, I think is like in the three to six month range of delivery. I never deliver mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't even know where to go from here. Because I don't shoot <laughs> wedding films. Let's make like that clear. Yeah. It's not that he shoots wedding yeah. films and they ghost them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For photography. Um, but um, yeah, you know, we take anywhere between two to six months to deliver a wedding film. And, you know, obviously we're not editing that wedding film every single day um, because we're also shooting every weekend and we have other um, obligations to edit. Um, but yeah, I would say that I put roughly... I would say 20 to 40 hours into a wedding film. How, oh. how many hours do you put into a wedding film, Bean? About 20 to 40. Yeah, I'd say about Aaron 20 Bean to 40 also hours. puts in 20 to 40. Yeah. yeah. I, if I'm hustling, I can do it in 10. Yes. But that's typically a Minutes? Film. It, it, that's typically... <laughs> Come to yeah, the microphone. It, it, yeah. Aaron's going to share a few words about editing wedding films. I am, um, since we're all not clients, I can say there's, <laughs> there's, an, there's A clients and then there's B clients. Um, and Woof. yeah, <laughs> there's, hey, there's, I wasn't going to say it. I'll say it. Um, I won't. There's the, the A clients or something you'd want to show uh, on a portfolio. You want to blog it. You want to share everything about it. And then there's B clients where it's just a normal wedding. Uh, and it's not something that I would share. Um, B clients would specifically be like friends who I gave serious discounts to. Yes. Uh, I would not, um, if they're a friend and I'm giving them a serious discount, I, I'll, I'll try to get the wedding video done because friends would prefer it done than perfect. And I, um, I just don't feel a need of showing off, um, like a wedding that just doesn't necessarily fit the brand. Um, but I do think if you're doing any photo or video work, you should typically share every single thing you do, you do, especially if starting out, uh, mm -hmm. absolutely everything you do post it. Um, because you, you need to post like mad when you're starting, but I've been doing this for six years now. And so and you're old, I know I'm patient. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, sometimes I can do a wedding film in 10 hours, but most of the time, if I'm really trying to craft something insane, it'll take 20 to 40. And yeah, yeah. Nice. It's a lot of time. Or I can finish, I can do any photo wedding, any photo wedding, I can do it in six hours. Yep. Yeah. 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 Any, yep. Like literally, it doesn't matter how small or big, the how many photographers there was, two, three, four, I can finish it in six, six hours. Yeah. What's the best way to get people comfortable with taking pictures when they don't like taking photos? Oh, by the way, you have nine minutes left to purchase this. Course. Nine minutes left. Ryan, don't nine. walk. Jump on the fence. <laughs> Run, Run to your computer. Open your computer. computer. Unlock a computer. Click purchase. Click, well, get where, in the course. where do they go to? They go to education.ericflowberg.com. Enter code Braxton Wallace for 75% <laughs> <Should> off. <laughs> That's not, real? No. no. <laughs> Absolutely I was not. like, I'll be right back. <laughs> that is not real. The funny no, part no, is no. like, as one of his best friends, I will literally probably <laughs> never see the course. <laughs> like, well, that's because it's I, so I, long. It's so long, but I watched him make every He's little second. Yeah. So like I've, 
I've seen. I can all honestly of. say that there will probably never be another person to watch the course as much as me. That's oh, yeah. absolutely, that's, that's true. absolutely. All right, that's, so what was, the, one, a, what was uh, the question? What's the best way said? to get people comfortable with taking pictures when they don't like taking photos? We actually have a module on this. Yes, we do. Yes, Ooh. prompting couples prompting. in yeah. sessions. Yes. Um, yeah. But in terms of actually getting them to get in front of the camera, regardless if they're comfortable or not, going in with the mindset that they paid you a lot of money to take photos. Good photos. Good photos at that. And you got to do your job. And I've actually been on weddings where I told people that. We're like, mm. look, they pay- it was actually added at a specific issue with a bride's dad. Mm. And he would not mm. get in front of the camera. And oh. I was like, did you pay for this wedding? And he was like, yes. And I, I told him straight up, I was like, that mean that means that you paid me as well, and you mm-hmm. paid me several thousand dollars to do this job. Wow! And mm-hmm. I need you to get in front of this camera, or your daughter is going to be unhappy, and mm-hmm. I don't like unhappy clients. Mm-hmm. And I told him that, and he respected and that. Sometimes you got you gotta, in front of the camera. Sometimes you got to do that with dads. Yep. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes dads, like dads be like that. Sometimes dads. Be you know what this you know what like, they say. This feels like a telethon. <laughs> That's <laughs> literally a telethon. We, yes. <laughs> it's literally. Yes. I, I just made that connection. Yeah. yeah. We need like a hot like a, like a landline. If, <laughs> if only we decided to do this four hours ago. <laughs> Benj, we're almost at four hours. Benj, always yeah. be learning, kids. Benj, we always Benj. be learning. No, uh, I miss. I miss Clubhouse I Benj. One. Can we bring Clubhouse Benj back? Clubhouse Benj, Benj was Clubhouse Benj awesome. Benj yeah. We're still locked arms, I just yes, realized. Um, oh, can we just I was like, oh, yeah, we we're, can going, we're going all the yeah. way. Um, Clubhouse Benj was awesome. <laughs> Let's see. Don't you dare. <laughs> Dilly says, if a client pays you a retainer this year, but the job isn't until next year, does it count as income for 2021, parentheses right now, or is it not considered income until you actually do the job, parentheses 2022? Well, if you collect the deposit right now, it's that income right now. Right now. Yes. 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 But that other 50% or however you structure your payments, whatever you collect probably the following year, which is how you usually book weddings, uh, yes, that other half of the payment that you collect then will be considered income for that next year. And I know one of my friends, uh, they actually don't pay themselves uh, from their business account until the job's done. Hmm. So he'll finish an edit and mm-hmm. then he'll pay himself from that edit. So it's a good in- like way to incentivize you getting work done. Nice. But yes, uh, yeah, it's income once you make the money and it's in, in your account for, yeah. yeah. Uh, Thomas says, hey guys, I'm a photographer and I'm stuck on my next landscape lens. I know this is primarily a wedding channel, but I'm curious about what you guys think. I'm thinking of a 35 1.4 or a 24 to 70 2.8. 24 to 70, 2.8. For sure. Not a doubt in my mind. Yep. For I sure. say that as well. It's yep. just more versatile. And um, yeah, 24 to 70 for sure. Yep. 35, 1.4 is a fantastic Phen- for like lens. anything, um, especially for weddings. That's a go to for a lot of wedding photographers. But uh, if you are shooting landscapes primarily, you want more versatility and you don't really need uh, no, like 1. a 1.4 aperture because we have five you're... minutes, guys. Five minutes. Yes. Five minutes. Yeah. Jump off five the fence. minutes to jump off the fence. Five minutes to grow your business into something you never thought in a million years it would be. Five minutes to radically change everything you thought you knew about right. owning a photo right. video business. Right. <laughs> Dude, Much should... in, in the wise words of boys like girls, it's five minutes to midnight, and you have only those five minutes to make this decision. Are you going to jump off the fence or not? That's a great song for yes, this exact moment. Is. Too bad we can't play it or we'll get sued. <laughs> no, they're not a band anymore, I don't think. I think well, it's fine. They they like dropped on the face of the earth that they released a country album. Yeah, and it was bad. That's what happens it when you release very, country albums. As a punk band. Yes. It was bad. Um, ben Hawes, everyone's getting delirious. Yes, sir. That's true. Uh, Dilly, that's what I figured, but I wanted to be sure. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks for the question. Juan, I already DM'd him. It's so long. I made a video for him to understand. Ha ha. Honestly, and that's a good thing. That's a better thing. Yeah. Eric actually prefers people to DM him via DM. Via, via, <laughs> wow, I can't talk. DM him via video. Uh, yeah. Send Eric more videos. He's, yes. <laughs> he's not Bombard like that. him with videos. Bombard him with videos. <laughs> No. No. Nope. Definitely not. Definitely not. Nope. Last time I checked, my name's Braxton Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't even be that certain of that anymore. Um, truly, though, five minutes left. Come hang yeah. in the classroom. Come join. Yes. By the class. 
Do it just so you can get in the Facebook group so I can talk to Yo, you guys. Okay, honestly, though, that's what I'm saying. The okay. Facebook group the, is such a big right. value. Yes, it is. Such a big, big value. Thing. You get to hang out with all the people in there. You're going to literally be alongside 100 other people in there, passing referrals to each other, passing work along to one another. Yes. You could you could buy this course based off of like second shooting jobs yes. and wedding referrals based off of that group alone, most likely. I'm putting this out here now. If you purchase the course in the next five minutes, one of y'all get to second shoot a wedding with me next year. Wow. Wow. Um, I didn't say that. Braxton definitely <laughs> did. Um, In the next um, five minutes yeah, only. Yeah. Yeah. Four minutes to midnight. Boys like girls played at my college. Wait, what? They opened for all American rejects? That's incredible. Dude, that's incredible. What college did you go to? to? That's a sick show what to be played heck? at your college. What? Have, have we ever guys, shot? Have you guys ever shot film? If yes, have you been asked to shoot a wedding on film? So... <gasps> I just did. What, what did, is this? Uh, shoot an entire wedding on film? So I got I got hired to shoot four hours of coverage on film. Specifically film? Specifically film. Oh, is that you, the wedding you we're just shooting did? in February? Yeah, it's in February. We're shooting that together in February. Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so we're, yeah. Yes. And we That's all really shoot cool. Film. It's really cool. We That's, shoot a lot of film. We shoot a lot, a lot of, of film. film. We develop all of our own film. We scan all of our own film. We do all of that yep. in the studio at Creative And Club. so if you'd like to send uh, us film, then send it to Creative Club Film Lab. Yes. Yeah. And we'll develop it and scan it for you. And yeah. three minutes. In, yep. in We'll do it in three minutes. And you have three minutes yep. to yep. buy. Um, Ivan, I'm so excited for you all to get some good sleep. I am sad these live streams will be over. Ivan. Hey, Ivan, the live streams ain't over, my They're guy. They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. Creative Club After Dark. Stay tuned. <laughs> We're having a phenomenal time. Uh, and honestly, like truly, this is not going to be the last live stream that we do. Oh, oh boy, howdy. Oh, oh yeah. let's go. <laughs> Matthew Fernandez. Looks like we're shooting together, brother. <laughs> is, is he in the is he in the live? Dude, this is incredible. <laughs> Please tell me he's in here. Matthew. Do you know Matthew? No, I don't. Oh, okay. but, we're saying, but we're shooting a wedding together next yeah, year. Matthew, if you're in here. Take take Wait, you and Matthew are shooting a wedding Taylor next year. You said I said anyone if buys in the next five, five minutes, minutes, they'll second shoot a second wedding shoot. next year. <laughs> Wait, that's two minutes left. Two minutes. <laughs> two minutes left. Oh, uh, this is so much fun. I love you guys. Honestly, Ben just in the chat. We don't deserve to talk. Ben about. just Ben, why are you still here? We, don't deserve to talk we about love about. you, man. But come on, it's so ben, kind of you to be here. I mean, it's not that late for him now. It's eight. Oh, that's true. Actually, it's almost nine o'clock for him. Yeah. I went to Central Michigan University during my time there. We had Big Sean, Kesha, Bob, a lot of great speakers it's too. <laughs> wait, wait. Sorry. Bob. Bob. Who's Bob? B.O.B. Oh, B.O.B. <laughs> I just said Bob for like. I just left Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Bob? <laughs> um, ben would love more of these live streams. Duly noted. EOS R A seven three. Whichever you. PM for him. Not whichever, even nine p.m. Whichever you own more lenses off. Whatever feels better. All right. Hey, it is now eleven. It's now eleven fifty nine EST. Yes, it is. Wow. Oh we wait. Are yeah. Officially closing up shop. That's it. Oh shoot! <laughs> he said Braxton B.O.B. -B. I know it's B.O.B. -B. I just said Bob so I could finish the sentence quicker. <laughs> now I know how okay. you feel. <laughs> All right. Okay. Wow. Oh, oh, oh is there oh, really oh. another? Oh my gosh! Oh, wow! Wow! No way. Oh, right under the wire! No way! Oh my gosh! Are you oh my gosh! Are you? All right. Looks like we have a flip a coin now between Matthew and whoever this is. That's true. She Lauren fan. Lauren fan. Lauren, Lauren fan. You are the last and Lauren fan. Lauren Thank you fan. so much for coming in the clutch in the last minute. Lauren fan, we're a fan of you. Yes. We're a fan of you. Okay. It is we need sleep. <laughs> so badly. <laughs> I kind of want to say token to you. <laughs> I don't want to go home. Is I mean, it? if is you want to keep going, Braxton, don't you live here now? My apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Braxton just sleeps on the couch and edits. <laughs> Honestly, I do. <laughs> Wait, oh, I think man. it was watching in here. That's it. That's it. Wow, it's that's over. It. Done. Done. Oh my that's goodness. It. Matthew or Lauren? Matthew and Lauren. First shoot. person to message me gets a second shoot with me next year. No, <laughs> it's Matthew. It's Matthew. Matthew. Well, no, the... both of them. Yeah. No, yeah. both of them. Okay, yeah. Sick. Yeah. Second and third shooter. Honestly, there we go. Can we all just shoot the same wedding together? <laughs> Poor person. Poor <laughs> person. <laughs> it's okay. He's taken care of. <gasps> oh man. Wow. Okay. Sweet. 
thank for you. Wow, the people that are still in here, thank you. I, I know it got real goofy at the end here. <laughs> um, we, as a team, Mike's in the other room. He's very tired. Um, we cannot thank you enough for the support, oh, for the encouragement, for this whole endeavor. Um, we're so pumped for everyone who enrolled, and we just hope that this is so transformative for you. We're so excited to keep doing things in the education realm mm -hmm. and to keep bringing you all value um, when it comes to your own businesses. And man, it's so cool to see people just saying congrats. And um, thank you so much for that. Uh, this all wouldn't be possible um, without these guys, without Mike in the other room. This was a true team effort and I don't want that to be lost on anyone. Um, we truly mean it when we talk about community over competition and as goofy as we can be and as fun as, as much fun as we have, just want you all to know that community reigns over everything when it comes to business relationships reign over everything. If those things aren't taken care of first. Um, things aren't going to be sustainable. So make sure you keep up with the relationships you have. We're all going to go on a bro date and like hang out yep. and be friends for a while instead of just work uh, partners. Um, but again, thank you so much for being here. It's the longest live stream I think I've ever done. <laughs> yes. yes. The first live stream I've ever done. <laughs> These guys held on the fort like nobody's <laughs> business here. It was so much fun. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone, um, for being here. And we hope to see you soon. Love you all. Bye. I actually, I think, I think Emma's in here. Hey, Emma, I'm on TV. <laughs> She's getting married to her next year. I'm My soon-to-be wife is in this chat Let's somewhere. Let's go. I'll see you guys. Hey, TJ, move here. Yeah, yeah TJ, TJ move here. Move here. Parth, TJ, thank you so much. Sean, TJ, thank you so much. TJ, you don't understand when we say that statement. They, Bean and Eric told me that exact same statement a year ago, and I'm literally on this live stream. We're not joking. Move because here. we never joke. Bye. Bye. Wait, Lauren and Matthew, reach out to me, please. <laughs>